This is episode 31 of That Time I Got Reincarnated in, in the, the Same world, world as an Anime Podcaster, where we talk about anime and manga because it's mimetic. I'm your host, Isekai Sensei Sama, aka Brad. I'm joined in this weeb cabal by Bento Baggins, aka Ben. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> and Kermit D. Krog. Ahoy, hoy, it's me. If it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the other series on our feed. We've got Heron Addiction, where Ben and I read romance and drama manhwa and discuss who is the best male lead to get with. And Shonen Jumping the Gun, where Kermit and I check out the first chapter of a new manga in Shonen Jump, as well as other special series, and to make predictions about their longevity. We've also got Bakabanashi, where everything's made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> And make sure you're subscribed, as we're going to have another new series coming soon. And we want to hear from you. You can talk to us on many different social media platforms, which you can find links for in the description and on our website, animepodcasterreincarnation.com. Come hang out with us on Discord, listen to our Spotify playlist, and get episodes early along with bonus episodes and other perks by supporting us on Patreon. Don't forget to rate the podcast and tell your friends. Well, as always, before we get into our discussion today, uh, we got some news. We got the news. We are starting the uh, the new anime season very, very shortly. Yes. Summer summer season's coming. What's 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 coming down the pipeline? Uh, so, real quick, we got two things that already started at the end of June here. Um, first, on the twenty sixth, uh, the strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army was a human. I don't remember if I talked about this one before. I probably should have looked it up. But uh, this is a it sure sounds like a light novel. It's a it's a manga that I've been reading for a while, and it's it's pretty good. Uh, I'm probably gonna check out the the anime because I'm interested. In it. You go for it, buddy. Um, and of course, the most important one uh, on the 27th, uh, the first episode of the Suicide Squad Isekai came out. Yes, I literally moments ago added the outro music that I found uh, to our playlist because it's a banger. <laughs> nice. Uh, I, I actually haven't <laughs> really seen anything about it besides a couple, you know, still frames and stuff. Like I literally, that. I all I know is the outro because somebody posted and it's just like Amanda Waller is like dancing. <laughs> I love the crazy. way they animated Amanda Waller. Yeah, Amanda Waller dancing in anime style was very entertaining and that and also the song being a banger was just like. Yeah, I don't know if I'll watch the show, but I'm curious now, at least. I'll have to watch the music video. Yeah. I mean, it's the outro. I guess it's also the music video. So, Are OPs and EDs music videos? I think you. Yeah, I think so. There's so many of them that just stand out on their own. Yeah. I think you can. I think you can do that. Hmm. Maybe not everyone, but. I, I think the only thing is they don't have the whole song. That's a good point. Most of the time it is a trimmed down version of whatever the song is. So, But they have started doing full music videos of the, uh, the animation. Yeah. I have seen that from time to time. Cause it's good for social media. Put yeah. that on YouTube. Cause then it's like, yeah. instead of that's like, then that gets to go to the band or whatever. You know what I do well, like though? Probably Cause studio. sometimes what, what happens if you, you hear the song in the, uh, OP or ED and you go oh I really like that song and you look it up and you play it and then it's way longer and it's like oh my god this is so much better it's so there's all this extra stuff um, or like what happened with Freerin we we found the it was the outro and we're listening to it and it's like oh it's it's like twice as long it's really cool and then the the second core came out and they used the other part of the song that works. That gives a feeling of journey. I was going to say, I feel like sometimes it's you listen to the longer one. You're like, I just want the shorter one. Like yeah. you outstage your welcome. I will always uh, enjoy B stars putting up a specifically anime version on Spotify. Mm -hmm. That is literally just the intro as you'd hear it on Netflix. Yeah. Cause there is that sometimes we're listening to that playlist and it like plays like, okay, we've got enough. First verse was enough. It and it was like, okay, skip. <laughs> got it. All right. Well, moving on Uh new, new summer season, I guess. Those two count as summer season, right? Yeah. Because they just started. It's summer. Yeah. Uh, starting on July 3rd, uh, something I know a lot of people are, have been waiting for, Oshinoko. <laughs> Ben's just nodding his head. Ben. It's the theater musical arc. 
It's it's no, it's it's what you want. It's a, they they're doing this season. The characters in Oshinoko, the plot is they all have to be actors in one of those anime music. Oh my gosh! Okay, we need to figure out where's this Ben. You know where? Where's this thing streaming? I got to get on Oshinoko now. High dive. High dive. High dive still is alive. Yeah. Okay, Brad. That's going on the sampler plate. <laughs> We're watching Oshinoko. It's time to finally pull the trigger on it. We're just going to start in that season. <laughs> no, we got to start from the top, but uh, we're going to start digging. I don't know if I can handle that. Uh, on the fourth, the next day. Um, Patriotic. We got Red Cat Ramen. Hey, I didn't think that was coming until fall. Yep. We Starting. will that, also going on the sampler plate. I'm going to I'm going to call my shot now. That should be yeah. a really adorable slice of life. That one I'm much more on board for. Yeah. Um, also on the fourth, um, I. I think I've mentioned this series before. If it's a light novel, I could just go sure and not it's know. Not. Um, okay, go. Oh. But I don't think I've talked about it in depth. Pseudo harem. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. Okay. So pseudo harem is about uh, a harem, right? No. No, it's there's, pseudo. No. It's, yeah. So there's these two kids. They're in high school, right? It's a slice of life, sort of comedy, sort of romance kind of thing um it's the the boy is a year older than the girl and she's in the theater club and he's also in the theater club but he doesn't act he's like a grip or whatever like he's stagehand yeah production stuff yeah um and they start liking each other and she wants to be an actress and she's really good at acting and so she has these different personas that she puts on. So it's like he's dating multiple girls. Okay. As with everything that's in these situations, I kind of love that idea. But also sometimes the idea I, the idea that I imagine in my head is better than what the actual thing is because it's a lot more shallow than it seems. It but is, like, I kind of love that no, actually. It's super cute and endearing. Um, the manga is actually over already. If you want to go out and just read the manga, I definitely recommend it. Um, I didn't see any, uh, I didn't watch any trailers for any of this stuff, but I'd poke my, um, I'd poke my head on a lot. Cause that's as somebody who's trying to get into theater. I think that's cute. I really like the manga, so I hope they do a good okay. job. Okay. Going on the sampler plate, uh, on the fifth quality assurance in another world. We brought that up before <laughs> assurance salesman. Um, I, I'm, I think I mentioned this before when I talked about it, I've never read this. I don't know anything about it, oh. but it's just an interesting, I guess, it could, I guess it'd be QA and they know where all the bugs are and they can clip yeah. out of bounds. So, but just wanted to, to bring that up since it's starting very soon. Uh, moving on to the sixth, I got two for you, Kermit. Ooh. On the sixth, we start with plus sized elf. You were asking about that. Before. I was asking, I was jokingly asking about plus size elf. Um, and we also have the elusive samurai. Oh, wow. Yeah. I forgot that was getting an anime yeah. on the sampler plate. It goes, uh, man, and- our plates getting full again. It was getting, <laughs> it was getting light. It was getting really light. I'm glad to have it fold back up. Uh, also on the sixth is a series that I really enjoyed. Um, enjoy because it's still going on. Uh, Dahlia in bloom crafting a fresh start with magical tools. So it's a, it's a series about a, a woman who her dad is like an inventor and I, I think maybe a noble, maybe just like a low level or something like that. And he passes away and she, oh, uh, she's, she's married to this guy first who like is, a, is a douchebag. Okay. Right? And so she divorces him and like gets revenge. She takes him for a ride. Okay. I was expecting um, this to be a thing about gardening. <laughs> No, she's she literally is like an inventor. Okay. Um, and she invents all kinds of cool things that use magic and all that kind of stuff. Um it's it's really good. It's it's semi slice of life in like a fantasy world kind of thing. So um there's actually multiple manga because I think it was a novel first, and then like someone started adapting it and then stopped, and then someone else picked it up and started from the beginning, and it was like it's a whole thing, so um, not localizing, adapting from a light novel. Yeah. Weird. Uh, so I might check out that, that anime since it's a more straightforward, like, oh, I can actually see the whole thing, maybe. Uh, all right. So moving on to the seventh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Tower of God is back. 
Sure. I know you guys don't care about that. I, I don't enjoy that series. So. Um, fairy tale, 100 years quest. Fairy tale still alive. Yeah. Or back to life. Yeah. How long has it been? I, I remember it being kind of a thing when I was in college, which yeah. is over a decade ago at this point. Um, also on the seventh, Kanikuman. Ah. Uh, perfect origin arc. If that means anything to anybody. It has been a billion years since I read Kanikuman. I remember very little. I'd poke my head in. That's not on the sampler plate, but I'm going to poke my head in. The last time I saw Kanikuman, it was on Fox Kids. The Fox Box, yeah. baby. They made another season just for America. <laughs> Uh, also on the seventh, uh, a journey through another world, raising kids while adventuring. A parents isekai, sort of. Uh, it's just the one guy he gets single isekai, parent isekai, and like these two kids are like the kids of some god. I think he's like the god of the ocean or something, and he's like, "Hey, I'm a god. I can't like be down here." So Your can you boon take care is of, child care. Can you take care of my? Well, they give him all kinds of op powers, so he can okay. There you go. Take care of the kids and everything. It's cute. It's a, it's a, it's a fun time. So, um, I enjoy that series. I think it's, it's probably worth checking out. However, it's probably the shovelware isekai of the season. Um, I can't imagine them spending much money on animating that, Yeah. but we've been surprised before. So we'll see. Uh, and last and definitely not least on the ninth, no longer allowed in another world. Also known as isekai Chicago. So I'm looking forward to that. Finally, they're putting a stop to it. <laughs> Not, you've been banned. It's been it's been years. I've been waiting for it. Well, congratulations. I didn't know I was gonna get an anime. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for for the summer season. I have one last bit of news though, is for after the summer season, okay. unless you have more news for after the summer season. No. Nope. Just because I learned it recently. Uh, we've spoken many times of the Don to Don anime coming out, which oh, I'm very yeah. excited for. Yeah. And uh, I'm seeing in the news that they're going to release their, they're so excited about it. They are releasing the first three episodes in theater showings. And if that yeah. comes to America, we're going to go see that because mm -hmm. I'm really excited about Don to Don. And that was uh, October, right? Yep. It's, it's did, a hot minute uh, from now, but I did watch the trailer for that a couple days ago and it looked really intense. It's good. It's wild. It's it's imagine Mob Psycho, but if it was more wild. Yeah. Although uh, the trailer I watched didn't have any subtitles, so I had no idea what was oh, going on. That'll help with the wildness. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this guy's like, he's got these glasses, but oh, now he's turning into, is he turning into a thing? Is that the same kid? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it pops off. You think you might be done with all of the supernatural fighter stuff but don to don was one i mean that was now over a year ago i'm like don to don I, i'm mm. about it and then we're, we're back in it i thought we had i thought we got out but we got pulled back in now would you but that's a topic that for another show like an exorcism thing what i mean it does all sorts of there's 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 demons and ghosts and yokai there are also mm. aliens and they're very strange it's just strange okay. but it's also like one of the most legit relationship ones that I've read not that I read a lot of romance where it felt the most like this feels like an actual relationship between two humans and not like the pretend ones that are in these things a lot mm. so um, just in case anybody doesn't know Ben you probably don't know this uh, Shonen Jump has decided to go all in on exorcism again for some reason this the Jutsu Kaisen's ending later I've, this year I've seen it on the app I saw like two we're getting three Three looked like the ones. exact same yep, manga. We, got, we just got really? two of them, and I think we're getting another one Sunday. And f me. Well, and recently, uh, so Kyoku Necromance. Which yeah, our episode didn't come out yet, right? Um, Did that one not come out yet? No, I don't know anymore. Uh, not doing oh, well at the bottom of the list. No, that because I released Psych House because I was yes, correct because Psych House was more timely. Um, but yeah, so it's just like uh, I think somebody figured out it's now twenty five percent exorcism yeah. manga. <laughs> Which is I'll tell you I'll tell you the only thing I want from the exorcism genre is an X Men ninety seven style revivification of Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> I'd watch that. You'd have to have somebody else to pick it up because it's what I, what's what's his name and he's busy being almost dead and trying to finish Hunter Hunter, which will never happen. Mm, yeah, yeah, he doesn't need to be involved. No. <laughs> Somebody who grew up loving Yu Yu Hakusho needs to do it. 
I'm available. Get the get the four star guys on it. You're available to to draw an anime. You can direct it. He directs it. <laughs> oh, okay. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about a fever? Mm. Cook in your brain. His only prescription is more Yu Yu Hakusho. And now we take you back to a time before the Civil War in a land far away, mysterious land of the rising sun. No one knows much about it, but one man ventures forth. And that man is what Kermit's going to tell us about today. Yeah. <laughs> What a serious lead in. <laughs> so this is from uh, episodes ago. We talked about, I don't remember the context. I think we were going other Japanese holidays and the concept mm -hmm. of yeah. um, nationalist drinking holidays in America. We have St. Patty's Day. We have Cinco de Mayo, where the actual originating countries don't care about it as much as the <laughs> Americans do because we like racial based drinking holidays so my my gag idea was in summertime is when uh this man who went to japan and he's not the first which we'll learn a little bit uh commodore perry opened japan in july and i thought that would be a good very uh blunt uh disrespectful time to have such a holiday to drink a bunch of like japanese sake in america oh we didn't we didn't get any sake well it's not july yet well but this is the episode yeah this is the episode I don't think Ben, you got a drink for us. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great with your fever. Actually, I've got hot sake a thing of water. Ooh, hot sake hot would be really good for his sore throat. Really? Yeah. Curious. Maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna. This is this is one of our. I'm t teaching moments, and we'll tangent as we go. So I've I'm doing some setup. So Commodore Perry, which we'll get into then, was sent on expedition from America to attempt to quote unquote open up Japan. So why is Japan closed in the first place? I wanted to go investigate that. So Japan's closer is called Seikoku, or Locked Country, and was from 1603 to 1868. That is 265 years that it was, quote-unquote, closed to, quote-unquote, the world. There's a lot of quote-unquotes right now. There's always, like, small details. But by and large, they are locked off from the rest of the world. I apologize for this tangent already, but does anybody ever get this weird thing where, like, when you talk about old like lengths of time it doesn't feel as long as it does like present day because when you say 16 something to 18 something it's like yeah. oh that's just a little while but that that's like four generations well, that's what more. i was saying that's mul 265 years is multiple generations yeah, of humans like and like we're talking about six eight generations over a hundred years ago where medical tech isn't as good yeah i mean this is before they open up and westernize so like i don't know what japanese medicine is like but like that's multiple generations where like the political ramifications of the country could change and they just don't, which is part of what the shutdown's about, admittedly. Um this Were was they still what sorry trading with China? Yes, they're they're doing really specific I have that in my notes that they're doing really small, very specific trading with China and the Dutch uh as well. But that's like specifically all right, the Dutch all in localized one to specific port. In yes, the, the artificial island Nagasaki. <laughs> And even that goes down over time after the initial shutdown and, and is like very strictly monitored. They're like, you go here or you go nowhere. And it's like really specific. But like those ideas are still going through. So why did it why did it do this? Why did it lock itself? Why did it lock countries, Sokoku? So this is somewhat self-isolation from foreign powers. They're seeing all these European powers coming over and taking Asia. They want to inoculate themselves against that. Um, and the ideas from these places, because you know what, we've got the American Revolution happening in the French Revolution. So they they literally let no one leave. And the thing that really got me is no one's allowed to come back in. So if you left, which did happen, like there are Japanese people in America at this point in time, back in the 16, you know, 1700s, they're not allowed back in. That's a because they could have ideas in their head. I want to say Britain was already in India at the time were they in china at that time probably yeah i mean if the dutch were... are over at this side of the world yeah. doing trading then yeah we're probably already starting colonies colonization is kicking in more They're, they were doing some stuff with opium do we know yes when when they uh took hong kong no i do not have that information um but yeah point being 
yeah, you have Great uh, Britain doing all kinds of stuff over there. Around yeah, and the French and, and the so, Dutch, and yeah. I don't really blame them. <laughs> so, no, but the, the key one, the key one, there's one key idea Japan really doesn't like. They make a... Jesus. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this one. Yes, correct. Is that it's Christianity is banned. This is literally that from all my research, which, you know, I tried to check a couple different things. I'm not going to say it was the most deacon and academic thing. But the main thing I saw is the Shogun found the spread of Christianity as a threat to Japanese stability so weird, more than anything else. JC out of here. Not allowed. It like, doesn't make any stomp sense. Stomp them, stomp them, stomp them and close the entire country so he can't come back. Because Jesus went to Japan. So, like, why were they so against it? <laughs> he lived there for so long. Which thing are you referencing? I don't remember. It's, there's this one that anime. There's a, there's, there's a town. There's a one, yeah, where they're like, Jesus came here oh. and lived here for 30 years after his brother was the one who actually sacrificed himself on the cross. And oh Jesus my escaped. gosh. <laughs> so now to even move the, the clock back even further, the history of Christianity in Japan. Christianity arrived in Japan around 1549 from Spain and Portugal and then was banned uh, around 70 years later in 1614. So it doesn't even take a full hundred years for the, the Japanese government, or I guess the Shogun, to be like, eh, eh we're not having this here. Um, Shogun tried so hard to stamp it out. He banned, yeah, he banned people from leaving or returning because he literally just, he does not want these ideas getting into the country. I suppose that has to do with like them uh, having a higher power than the emperor. Yeah. Or even the shogun, like it gives. It also gives peasants like JC's good for the peasantry. Yeah, Christian, because it leads you to believe like, oh, I'll have this afterlife, and not like this is your place in the world, right? And you will be stuck here through reincarnation and whatnot. I don't know that one's that one's me not knowing enough to talk about it properly. So, but yeah, like just so completely trying to inoculate the country from Christianity, upsetting everything because we can't have people having ideas that will make them want to overthrow the government. That's not really doing anything for them. Mm -hmm. I had this one story that that kind of made that very clear, and this was admittedly post the lockdown, um, but it was one that made it even more intense. Because I think we, you know, when you look back on history, you can go, "Oh, this entire period is the shutdown period." But in the moment, you don't see it as like I don't think they saw it in the middle of like we're going to be closed for 265 years. It right. just kept going, and I'm sure this is it, how things are. It gained and waned in intensity. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know about this. I'd love to learn more about this. Uh, was the Shimabar Rebellion in 1637. It was a peasant revolt over heavy taxation and abuse by local officials. But most of said peasants had been converted to Catholicism, and the rebellion took on a very Christian, a lot of Christian overtones. Said peasants also got the help of a large number of ronin, which I thought was really funny. It was said, quote, the rebels fought so zealously that an army of 100,000 troops was unable to quell them, and the Japanese government had to call in a Dutch gunboat to blast the rebel stronghold. Following this incident, the government vigorously enforced its prescription of all Christian beliefs and activities. Like, literally... It takes a Christian to kill a Christian. <laughs> I was going to say, the <laughs> Dutch were like, yeah, we'll blow up those Christians. I, don't, I mean, admittedly, they blew up catholics ah good point i don't know if catholicism is in in, in dutch territories uh, reformation because christianity is coming into japan through spain and portugal which i'm assuredly is catholic right yeah yeah as far as i'm aware yeah the Brits are not bringing catholicism that we'd be bringing protestantism but they're also not here right so right. yeah so Were like anglicans by then we don't hear i mean i mean obviously like we're getting Japanese history through video games and anime and manga. <laughs> so like, you know, grain of salt there, but like, this sounds like a fascinating moment that they, I mean, probably it was quelled historically because they don't want any history of anybody rebelling, like, especially through the, the guise of Christianity. Uh, speaking of which plug for the, uh, 4k HD remaster of seven samurai. That's coming out. Yeah. A bunch of I really thought you were going to drop in like a latter day saints ad or something. <laughs> Uh, so the Mormons, um, <laughs> that's what I always think when you say J Jesus Christ lived in Japan, I always think it's just some crazy Mormon I mean, lore that I don't know about. He was in America. Why, why couldn't he go to Japan too? So that's why, like, that was the main point that I got of why Japan is closed is we do not, the Shogun, the Shogunate does not want Christianity getting into the country because it is upsetting the order of everything. It's fucking it all up. We don't want it. Stomp it out. Stomp it out. Burn it out. Stomp it out. Close the do doors. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. 
and super control anything that comes into the country. But we are still but apparently going to read, it didn't work. We're, we are still <laughs> going to read Dutch studies. I mean, it goes underground. We talked about this in our Christmas episode. That's one of the reasons we're talking about this is Japan shut down to stomp on Christianity. They did not want it there. So that's why it's closed. So now we've set up why it's closed. Now we have to set up our, our main character of Commodore Perry. Born Matthew Calbraith Perry on April 10th, 1794 in Rhode Island. He was the son of a captain in the Navy who served during the Revolutionary War. We're only about 20-ish years out from the USA declaring independence. So this is, he's, he is born. He is an American. 1794. Did I get my numbers wrong? No, no I, I got mean, my numbers right. Yeah, but that uh, he must he would have been fairly old then by the time yeah, this to, happened. That's we'll get there. Yeah, sort of crazy. But I like that. Like the Navy is running through his blood. Like his dad mm. served as an American served in the Revolutionary Army's Navy, which I didn't really know was a thing. No, oh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Three takes place during that, and that's where they <laughs> added the the, the boats. So oh, yeah. obvi- I remember obviously, obviously, game instead of high school when I learned about it. <laughs> Um, at 15, he joins the U.S. Navy and he takes part in the War of 1812. I also don't have it in his notes, but his brother is also in the Navy. Like, it's, he's just in a Navy family. He's Navy AF. Um, he serves on a number of ships that sail around the Mediterranean Seas in Africa. So he's like all oh, over the place. Everywhere. Jeez. He is, he is not. Uh, in a very one piece move, he is sent to the West Indies to hunt for pirates and later work with the British to suppress the slave trade on his schooner, the USS Shark. He's very based. It's pretty dope. This is who Garp is based off of. I could believe there's got to be a character in One Piece who's based off of Commodore Perry. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I've been listening to. How does Oda feel about all that? I don't know. So, genuinely, because he's got so much. Uh, sorry, it's a, not hi, very many good Navy guys. Here, in here's one my piece. side tangent. Um, I've been listening to that series on YouTube of that dude's mom, who's like a English teacher, and she's like a Dregan ph- philosophy, and they just have these streams going over all the arcs. And like, there's all this extra stuff I never read into that. She's like, oh yeah, this and this and this, like she's predicting like Luffy sun God back in Jaya. And it's Mm. like, it's like some of her predictions are just like insane of like, you're predicting things that are happening literally right now. Nice. With like surprising accuracy. Uh, What did you say the name of it? Um, I think it's like Drawk. D R A W K. I don't know. They're really good. I've been I've been slamming through them, but like plug for plug something. for somebody else talking about One Piece that's way smarter than me. Um, but no, I'm really curious. There's got to be a Commodore Perry somewhere in there. That was one thing I didn't actually get in my reading that I want to do because I focus more on the history of like what does a modern Japanese person think about Commodore Perry? Because one of the the videos that I listened to that was like um, a Navy man historian talking about him. He's just like, yeah, most Americans don't know who he is, but like. Yeah everybody every japanese school kid does i mean probably like, depends on where your family was in the shogun's rigid caste system <laughs> interesting but how much does that go to now like that's the it's the weird like what do we, that what goes do we way think of like now. weird old things that happen in america they had to make laws to change uh, uh they used to have companies looking at uh the family registry like you would have to send them in your whole family registry and if you were from a village that was like known to be uh, the lowest caste, which is like the people that work with uh, like uh, breaking down animals and stuff, like skinning, uh, workers, butchery, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they would not employ people. They would discriminate based on that. That's effed up. And I, I think a lot of the Japanese government is still defended from are still descended from a uh, respectable families. And how, how stupid it is basing a caste system off of that anyway, because like those people are really important. Yeah. You don't get meat and clothes without those people. Like, what are you doing? I'm going to throw rocks, but I'm going to, I'm going to choose to believe that not everybody in Japan or the majority feels like that. And that's just the government as I gesture broadly to the hellscape our current political system is. And we could say, who would ever believe these things? And then I gesture broadly to our political system yeah. and situation. So well, it's, it's you, what it happens when you don't have like, they had the Meiji restoration and everything, but no one ever invaded Japan. No one ever, nope. just not until world war II were they forced to do it different. Yep. We didn't even invade them. We were just yeah. like, so here, we got a gift for you. We got a second one. Just to make sure. Um, okay, back to Commodore Perry. Sorry, we've escalated. We've gone forward in time. 
Uh, no future vision. This is chapter one. Oh, yeah. um, known as the father of the steam navy, he found naval education, training, and modernizing very important. And he personally oversaw the construction of the navy's second steam frigate, which he then commanded. So, like, that's what I saw repeated in a lot of information about him. It's like this dude is not yeah, just I guess this. That like, was in in the Civil War. Yes, they, they had, had the ironclads. Yeah. So he is the one pushing for the move to steamships and upgrading, but just even just general like education and training. Mm -hmm. Um, seemed really important to them. So, like, he is he is a sharp character. He was made a Commodore, which is like a high-ranking captain, in 1840 at the age of 49. I did not know this, but the title of Commodore is an older term and has since been retired for the U.S. Navy. I think I did know that. Which is why you don't really see, you don't because see you, yeah, nobody's yeah. Commodores anymore, yeah. unless you have a Commodore 64. I think the Wikipedia article said supposedly, like, the National Guard maybe uses it in like a really particular branch, but not in a way that like you're you're not meeting a Commodore. But it's still a a title that we know of. It's a title so. that demands respect that we know of, but it's not. It's somewhat archaic at this right. time. Uh, to fill out more of his history, he took part in the Mexican-American War, which admittedly I should learn more about. I can understand why we wouldn't learn about a war with our neighbor while in school with a bunch of other Hispanic kids also present. Regardless... He was put in charge of the home squadron for the war and was present at a number of important battles, including the attack on Tabasco, where he, quote, personally led a 1,173 man landing force ashore and attacked the fort of San Juan Batista from land, taking the city. So, like, even in his 40s and 50s, like, dude is showing exemplary things both abroad and at home mm -hmm. in times of crisis. On top of all that, through his career, he had to play diplomat to multiple major and minor powers and players within his time in the Navy. Uh, and I had the the anecdote that this includes meeting Tsar Nicholas I of Russia, uh, is that when he met Perry, he wanted to make him Admiral of Russia. <laughs> so he was so charmed and was like, oh my gosh, you know what you're doing, that he wanted to make him the Admiral of Russia. Which Imagine probably that alternate history timeline. I mean, it's not going <laughs> to do too much because... Hi, here's all the history corner. The reason why the current Russian invasion is happening and why also the Russo-Japanese war happened is Russia wanted warm water ports because you can't do much with the Navy when all of your waterways freeze up during the winter because you're in a very cold place. So wouldn't have been very useful. And this is me jumping ahead, but just to, it just seemed fitting because it would feel weird to put it at the very end. Commodore Perry died in 1858, just three years after his expedition to Japan and just a handful of years before the start of the American Civil War mm. to give a, a placement. So this is a man born shortly after the, Ameri the American Revolutionary War and died shortly before the Civil War. He picked really good <laughs> in that pocket of time. I don't think you could. I think I don't think you could have had better timing. It's not bad. I'd, I'd be curious because he I mean, he was old, but he wasn't like old, old, but I'm sure just a lot of time at sea will mess you up. It's all that salt. Not good for bodies. So, OK, cool. We've done all we've we've set up Commodore Perry. We set up why it's closed. Why does USA want Japan to open? So the major factors I saw was Europe. European powers are generally setting up fueling stations all around Asia already. And America wants theirs. Fueling stations. Coal stations. These steamships need fuel. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they need specific spots that they can refuel that are essentially just theirs. You just talked about the steamships, but for some reason I just kept with like Correct. sailing ships. They yeah. run on coal. So that's kind of a small one. The The main one I see show up a lot is that um, American whalers are traveling near Japan because that's where the whales are. I think this came up in another like episode we talked about ages ago because um, it was familiar to my brain. The American ship shipwreck because, you know, you're at sea, you're trying to fight these whales. It's a dangerous mm -hmm. thing. And Japan just doesn't like they either take the shipwreck victims, either prisoner or just straight up kill them. And America's like, could you just not do that? So some of it's that some of it's like open up trade. Please open the country. Stop yeah, having like, it be closed. I mean, OK, we get it. You're closed. Take the people. And then send them back. Please stop killing our... <laughs> like, but no, because nobody is allowed to leave or come back. We cannot have any... We're just going to keep them in a box or we're going to kill them. Nobody nobody can bring ideas in or out. Magically take all of our knowledge, even though... <laughs> uh, dude, here, I got, I've got another thing for this, some of the setup. Hmm. Uh, speaking of which, there you go. Um, originaler, one Commodore John Alec was supposed to be in charge of the expedition, which was an attempt to return 17 shipwrecked Japanese sailors who were residing in San Francisco, but was relieved of his command due to some political and ship-level squabbling. He was replaced by Perry. 
So like, I didn't think about that. It was like, oh yeah, Japan would also be out sailing. I mean, I guess to an extent and they could have shipwrecked who knows when Mm -hmm. and they want to go home. So it's like, please take your people back. They would like to go home. And the Shogun's like, nah, not doing that. Which makes me wonder because like, if anybody isn't aware, uh, go on Google Earth and and view the the Earth view. You the know, Earth, like the ball. When you zoom out far enough, you get the actual globe Earth. And center your map on the Pacific Ocean. You will find that there's no land masses. The Pacific Ocean takes up basically half the planet. It big. So I wonder. For a country that's like, hey, we're closed. Nobody's allowed to in or out. Now, obviously, they're still going to send ships out for fishing and stuff like that. But how did those fishermen get far enough that they ended up close enough to the United States to be kept there for a while? I mean, how did the American sailors get close enough to Japan to shipwreck there? Well, I imagine the Americans. I would say it was the whales. the Americans are sailing farther abroad, right? I guess so. Um, Because they'll go to... Japanese whaled too. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's it. It's just just that moving in both directions. I didn't see the particulars of why. I'd love to know. Like, I love love these nitty gritty, like, human level stories in history where it's like, here's the broad strokes of it. It was one of the reasons why I wanted to research on that, that this wasn't just this, you know, this troglodyte shows up in his gunboats and goes, open the country or die, and that there was more... um, I, I mean, context for everything and detail and specificness and not just somebody wielding a cudgel and going, right. open the country. Not to say that the, the gunboat diplomacy is, has a name for a reason, but there's more to it than just a brute showing up and going, open up or die. This is a weird rabbit hole I've gone down. Go for it. Uh, for other it. things, but like, um, I at least was not aware of how important like whale oil was to industry. Mm. It was a long ass time before we had reasonable synthetics like this. This stuff was so valuable that the Nazis had a like they did set up a a landing in Antarctica to leave supplies to try to whale down south because they were getting stopped everywhere else. Mm. And so like we're competing in the Pacific with Russia and China and and Japan for that resource. And we're losing because in a lot of ways, like they're closer to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it had a big strategic value. It still does. I mean, that's the only reason we're close with Japan now. Yeah. They sit real nice right next to some people we don't like. Yep. And also they're the next landmass after California. Yeah. Although, so I mentioned about how big the Pacific Ocean is. You can actually sail north and go up like around to where Alaska is and come down. And that's like, that's a safer route to take than just sailing straight yeah. across. And maybe that's what they did. I don't know. I don't know enough about whalers. Yeah, that that's Maybe that'll sense. be the next book I read when I'm done with my Australia book. Poor whales. Yeah, poor whales. It's like they're going extinct or something. I don't know. Do you know why it's called a right whale? Because it's the correct one. It's the correct whale to kill. It's the oiliest whale. The oiliest whale. So what what were they using whales whale oil for in the 1800s? Isn't it for like machine parts? Lamp oil, yep, industrial lamp lubricants. Oil. Yep. Um, I think they I think they were also using it just as like heating, maybe. Because they like we had oil. A wells. lot of different important things to society at the time um i get uh when was i guess that was late 1800s i'm trying i'm thinking of there will be blood because that's what, where i <laughs> well, know no, but even if you have from. oil it doesn't mean you have like this is the best burning oil for a lamp that will that's burn true. the longest and not be all sooty like there was probably a specific yeah, to how it burned that made it more much more valuable that when um ground oil fossil fuel oil was first introduced people didn't want to use it um, instead of the whale oil, because the whale oil was so much cleaner burning and like it didn't smell bad or anything because yeah. they didn't have the processing methods yet to make the crude into a good cleaner burning, uh, fuel source at that, at that point. Yeah. 
I forgot one little thing I didn't put in my notes about why the USA wants Japan to open. There is also a little dash of a thing called Manifest Destiny kicking in. We have moved across the country. We have run out of normal land. So we are looking outward, even though we're still a technically more closed off America at that time. Because this is pre-World War One, where like the door really starts opening up fully. We're looking for other things to get our fingers into at this point. So Japan is one of those things. It's like, hey, Europe's getting over here. We want our fingers in something. It's so. the next most westward thing. Yeah. Westward expansion. All of hey, our there's an ocean. All here. of our parents I are getting said into westward Asia. expansion. Yeah. <laughs> Manifest destiny. We're gonna go the whole way around the world and then we're gonna conquer it again. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Get back to the east. I'll both ways. Take over this these people. But these are our people. We're already here. This yeah. is like where our capital is. Yeah. I said take <laughs> it over. <laughs> Okay, back back on back on track for for prep for the opening. So, Perry at first when he got charged with it for for it from from President Millard Fillmore. Oh, um, he didn't want to do it because he didn't think it was going to work. There is actually multiple other earlier attempts for like a fifty year span of Americans specifically trying to open Japan, and like through all this, like America is not the only one trying to open Japan. Multiple nations are trying to do it. The British are here. The French are here. The Russians are here. Like. People are trying, and it's not working. The one I wanted to talk about that I didn't know about that caught my eye was a a James Glynn was visiting Nagasaki, which is that artificial island we've talked about, and negotiating for the release of 15 American sailors who were imprisoned. They tried to block his entrance, but he stood firm and demanded they release the prisoners and threatened intervention by the U.S., which worked as the prisoners were released. He brought this strategy of firm shows of force back to the U.S., where it was incorporated into the Perry expedition. So, like, I mean through behavior they saw hey this works if we just stand up to their polite please go away they just sort of fold at it i guess <laughs> so again more things that i liked is like perry reads and studies literally every single book he can find on japan which is in- admittedly not that many because the country is closed off and this includes consulting with a japanologist named Philip Franz von Seibold, who was a German who lived in Nagasaki for eight years, mm. which I want to know what his deal is. Um, but it's not his story, but it's just like talking talking to one of the original weebs. I was surprised he was German and not French or Dutch. That, that surprised me a little that That's he was German. The, they, they get along famously with the Germans. <laughs> they do. I... <laughs> I'm not to... talking about World War II. Oh. I'm saying, generally speaking, I did. I do. The have Japanese to... get along very well with the Germans. Interesting. Okay, sure, sure. But I do need to take this small <laughs> tangent in this in this laughing moment of I played. Um, I played Ticket to Ride Japan, and you mm. know who else is also in the Ticket to Ride Japan expansion? Who's on the other side of the map? Italy. That box. That box had two thirds of the axis in it. <laughs> That's a strange combination. This is how they put them together. I don't know. So yeah, he's he's studying. Um, he's also asking the government that he can have a greater latitude of like what he can do and the ability to use force if the Japanese try to really like threaten him as they had done to prior Listen, attempts. Can I poke them aggressively in their chest? Yeah. Can I gesture to the gun under glass? <laughs> um, and he also got like the best sailors he could get. He the people captaining his boats are people he worked with before. So like he is trying to get as much prepped and knowledge in his head as possible for this expedition. If we have to, we will single-handedly take over Japan. <laughs> no, but not it's not it's not just for the military aspect of force it open of just like the ability to 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 know things and be prepped to attempt this yeah. this is a this is a diplomatic mission. It is still gunboat diplomacy. It's that show of force, but at the end of the day this is an intention of we don't want to use these. We're going to point at them, so we hopefully don't need to use them, and we can get to this the the terms of the deal. Hey, you know how you had the Dutch take care of that those Christians? We have all of those ships. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are at the events of the opening of the country, which is what my notes say. Um, we're it, finally at the beginning. We're finally at the beginning. <laughs> I like you need context. Context is important. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Eight ships were a part of the expedition. Three were steam power augmented. They arrived July 14th, 1853. Perry is 59 at this point. Hmm. So he is, he is, he's an elder. He's getting there. He's an elder statesman. Did, um, uh, just real quick. Did, I don't know if this came up in your stuff, but when they say steam power augmented, is that like they took normal sailing ships and like 
bolted steam onto them? That was my idea. The 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 description I the pictures I saw in the description I read is that they had a they did not they could put up sails if they needed to, but they had they were ironclad and they had like a steam powered paddle wheel that moved them forward. So probably built as steamships, but with sailing back up. Yeah, they're kind of like a middle thing. I don't think they're full on ironclads yet, but mm. I didn't get into the weeds on it. But like, understand, and I guess here's the thing. The Japanese freaked out when they saw these ships belching smoke and moving without sails. These <laughs> Kurafune, or black ships as they called them, which from what I gathered was that this was their general name for foreign ships. I guess from the original Portuguese ships, I think, was what I read. Uh, I was just assumed it was like, oh, because these are these black metallic belching smoke ships. Um, but from my understanding, from my research, that wasn't the situation, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So they're coming into the Japanese waters. Boats filled with Japanese soldiers surrounded the American vessels and were told to turn back for home. Uh, the old Japanese art I found uh, depicts this looking a lot more like smaller fishing boats than like bigger military boats, which like I know the Japanese has a navy at this point. Probably not. to, But not scale. in this very moment when they're landing at. Um, I don't know where they're outside exactly. Like. I don't know the scale of all this place because they're talking about all these different places the boats can go. So my mm. sense of like time scale is hard to figure out exactly without like me like meticulously mapping and planning things. But here it is that like Japanese and just like, please go home. And they go, no, you go home. I've got business. I've got a letter <laughs> from the president. Finally, Japanese negotiators get onto the boats and Perry says through his translators, he is there to deliver the letter from the president to the emperor. They come to an agreement that he can deliver the letter. They try to decide where the ships can dock. Japan wants Nagasaki because that's the port they always send the foreigners to. Perry refuses. There's a lot of Perry refusing about ports. Well, because at, at this time, uh, the emperor was in uh, is it Kyoto at the time. Or is that... Ben, do you remember... He might be in Edo because there's a point where they talk about later about wanting to go to Edo. This also my understanding is the emperor mm. is like essentially a puppet of the shogunate. Yeah. But I think just of maybe I'm assuming from and either it was the video I watched or the information the Americans had at the point that they like, oh, they are ruled by an emperor. Because Nagasaki is down south. And yes. yeah. Tokyo and Kyoto and those are more in the middle of the country. Like that's what gives me confusion about like, and if this was not just an audio podcast where I could go like, here's a map to show people, <laughs> I'd have probably spent more time looking into that because it's like they go to Yokohama or they go to Kurihama, which is near Yokohama. That's the spot they settle on. But the the important thing there is that we we go, um, oh, why couldn't he just go park at Nagasaki? Because that was really far away. No, but also some of that is like, no. Like, because like, it's the thing of like, respect me, I'm delivering this letter to him. I'm not just going to give it to you. I'm going to make sure this makes it to like an actual person in right. power and not just this middleman negotiator, which admittedly it still kind of goes to to get to the shogunate, but it's somebody who's like high up and specifically trusted, like secondhand man of the shogunate was mm -hmm. my understanding of it. And some of that says it's like, I'm not going to the same port that all the other foreigners you live. Like, this is like Perry is attempting to show a force. Again, remember, he's got this is gunboat diplomacy. He has that. I don't remember if it's this one or the second one, but it's probably this one that they fire off a set of cannons, which is supposedly to celebrate like the 4th of July happening, but is also like, and they're blanks, but it's like, they're also cannons. <laughs> So gun, again, we come back to gunboat diplomacy. I think that's the famous picture everybody has. From it. That's what everybody talks 40 about. 40 of these on each boat. <laughs> yeah. The ship's dock and many Marines, including bands, come on shore for the ceremony. The letter was delivered then to the Shogun, who is Tokugawa, and Perry said he'd be back in a year for the follow-up. Gotta remember, things took a lot longer then. Perry left the U.S. in 1852 before his arrival the next year. So, like, he left in 1852 to get to Japan in 1853. Like, this stuff takes months i was actually going to ask i i i wonder how long that journey actually takes because i mean steamships weren't exactly faster than sailing ships and he still has to stay generally at pace with his sailing ships there were eight ships in the arm that i don't want to say armada is the right word but that set of ships yeah. only three of them are steep augmented to be able to move without the wind power but you still have to kind of keep everybody together for appearances for this diplomatic mission right so, admittedly, the country doesn't open until the next year, not in the summer. But, like, come on, we need a summer drinking holiday in, in July outside of the 4th of July. It's exactly a year later. So. What? 
It's it's one year later. But so it isn't still, though. In the intervening it. time, Japan <laughs> isn't doing so great. They don't know how to respond, and Shogun Tokugawa Iyoshi dies shortly after Perry leaves. His sickly son, I, uh, I don't know how to say that. I don't. A, a Siata? No, that's not it. Have I never said this out loud? Whatever. His son is sickly and he's not ready to lead. So they all think they can't resist the American demands by force, but they also really can't make a decision on it. Whoever is like semi in charge outside of the shogunate, they're just kind of waffling around. Uh, the daimos, which are kind of the leaders of all the various nation states in there, are pulled of the 61. 19 were in favor, 19 were against, and the rest are all over the place and vague. Some of them make points, and it's just the most, it's like, guys, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> You think we can get the Dutch to shoot him again? I don't think the Dutch could take on the U.S. at this point. I got really confused when I'm like, 61, 19 voted yes, 19 voted no, and I'm like, there's a, there's a bunch missing from there, right? This seems really important. Yeah. So yeah, Japan's not, they're probably going to capitulate to it. But there are also multiple other nations, including Russia, Britain, and France, wanting to open Japan exclusively for themselves. So Perry returns earlier than a year on February 13th, 1854, only eight months later. So yeah, if it was literally a year later, I could go, we could keep it in the summer, but I feel like it fits better in the summer than in, in February. Well, we need a we need a summer one. It's separated out from Valentine's Day. Yeah. And that's like the initial contact. Like that's the what that's the story everybody talks about. Even though like a thing happens in here is like the most iconic anime like major big bad showing up that has ever been <laughs> i'm very excited to get to those those notes so japan was ready to accept the demands in Fillmore's letter but it took a frustrating while to pick the where of the negotiations perry wanted edo japan did not perry lost his temper and threatened to break 100 ships within 20 days to go to war this was larger than the entire U.S. Navy at the time. So he is he is definitely like very specifically like blustering himself up to go like freaking get it together. Like we're doing this. Like stop I'll bring a hundred ships, sir. We don't have a. I will make more no, ships. They don't know. The Japan bring... doesn't know that. The, their doors are open. They're no, closed. I'm the, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Yokohama was then picked, which was nearby the original spot. Finally, on March 8th, wanting to make a big spectacle as possible. This is this is the bit. This is I, There's some of these pictures, but none of them are going to do it proper justice. And I would love to see this. This feels like something that would happen in an anime or a video game. Like, I think I want to say there's like a recent samurai game where the American showing up and specifically Commodore Perry shows up as a boss. Mm. I could be wrong about that. I don't remember what it's called. Um, the 60-year-old Commodore Perry. Yes, <laughs> but he's an American. And he breathes fire. I don't know. Uh, uh, finally, on March 8th, wanting to make as big of a spectacle as possible, Perry landed with 500 sailors ready on land and two big columns facing inward. When Perry stepped foot on the beach, they all came to attention and three bands started playing the Star Spangled Banner. Jesus. He also had two of the tallest African-American sailors in his squadron behind him, one carrying the U.S. flag and the other Perry's personal pennant. Nice. Dude showed up like an anime big bad, and I want to see that in anime. Like, and it's literally I can I can picture Dio jumping out of the carriage <laughs> when he lands and goes, Oh. Keeping in mind, this was before the Civil War. So having those black sailors there was a, a an additional choice on top yeah. of dude helped try to yeah. I mean, I don't know his sp specific like written things on slavery, but like I, I put in the notes earlier, like, dude worked with Britain to stop the slave trade from happening. He definitely would have been in the Union. Yeah, uh, if he was alive for it. Stop the slave trade, colonized Mexico. I know. Kind of colonized Japan. It's, He's a mixed bag. It's complicated. America's yeah. co Everything's complicated. No, 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 no. It's the good kind of colonizing. <laughs> yeah, I know. They were enriched by it. Well, I was about to say something that involved the word enrich, and I've decided to stop so we can play in your own Im uh, imaginations, people. I did not say that. Um, despite the gunboat diplomacy, favor between the two nations appeared positive. Gifts were exchanged, including a miniature steam locomotive. Uh, and there's a story describing uh, samurai riding this little locomotive with glee. And I just thought that was the funniest, oh cutest God. thing. I would love to see that. They don't have trains. Commodore Perry started the ball rolling that gave us demon train nice uh I'll more information on that later um, a lot of different gifts exchanged between both of them one of them was also a telegraph machine 
with sailors specifically taught to teach the Japanese how to use it. And those sailors were taught and trained by Samuel Morris, who nice. invented the Morris code. Which, like, this again, this is the anime. Like, here's all the bloodline stuff coming in. This yeah. is the secret. This is the Jujutsu Kaisen. We've gotten the, the cursed arts weaponry out of the cabinet. The fine china is here. This is a, that's the kind of thing where it's like when you see the anime and it's like, oh, this person's connected to this famous yeah. person, that. And you're like, that's so unrealistic. And then it's like, no, this happened. But, like, <laughs> I don't know how big of a deal it was to them then, but it's like the father of Morse code, the thing that everybody is using for the telegraph machine taught these sailors to teach the Japanese about telegraph machines. You know, that also makes you wonder, like, what what was the setup that they did at the time? Because they wouldn't have had telegraph lines. They just had two of so, them, I guess. Yeah, they just had two of them and uh, a piece of wire and they put them in different rooms or something. Yeah, I'm sure they gave him like a big spool of wire or something. Yeah. So like, it's also like Perry is traveling with all these gifts for his first visit. It's not like, I mean, by how long it takes, I, I don't know where he's dawdling, but he's not just going home to my understanding, he's not just sailing home to the USA and then just sailing instantly back. Like he, he loaded up with ship. These, he had these gifts from the first visit a year ago in July. You gotta get them hooked on it. <laughs> they need trains. And then, Japan loves trains now. And well, and arguably they're better at it than us. They are. Everything not wants to become arguably. trains and they let it happen. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you get them hooked on it and then I'll come back. I'll, I'll get you a whole telegraph network Gonna need another port. Yeah, some yeah. some of it is specifically the like, hey, here is all of the benefits you could get from trading with us. Please trade with us. These are things you could have. Listen, we're gonna connect a telegraph at this port here, but we want to connect it at a different port. So you need to open that one to us as well. <laughs> is it as bad of like getting somebody addicted to drugs as it is of like, here's a train? I'm what's sure. the what's the word for that? <laughs> yeah. You mean first one's free? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. That's no. That's genuinely actually what I was looking for. You could make an argument that introducing technology to people who don't have it could be seen as a negative thing. I don't particularly look at it that way, though. I think in most cases it comes down to like how do you use it, and that's a choice that everybody has to make. On yes, own. I'm going to make a small thing. I know we we've said, and I'm going to I'm going to support this. Say like colonization is bad. Generally speaking, yes, but also. In this particular case, not that it's 100%, this is a gray situation, this is not black and white, but also, like, Japan is a stranglehold on its own people that they're not letting any, like, they're literally stagnating their population yeah. of this draconian thing of shutting down the nation. If it wasn't common repair in the Americans at this point in time, somebody was going to do it at some point, and we don't know if it was could have been as diplomatically done as it occurred. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's looking at the time. It's like it's that thought of if these things were going to happen regardless from somebody, can we celebrate the fact that they happened in a bloodless way in a time <laughs> that that is not an assurance? Yeah. And um, also in so many awesome ways, yeah. like not even just not violent, but also fucking awesome <laughs> in, a, in a big thing like this is it like this is the part where I'm like, I, I missed that part of the research to Google it because I was just kind of so stuck on the historical thing of it. It's like. What do the Japanese think of him then? What do they think of him now? Well, like, I have people to imagine know about them. That that the whole thing of like showing up with all these crazy boats and guns and then like having all these troops and having a fanfare when you step off the boat. And, and what are that. black people? Like that must have um I think black people They were, were but like I'm sure uh, I don't think a lot of Japanese I think Japanese people are still somewhat surprised by um the, the those gamers, of, of, of containing a lot of melanin. The gamers would probably argue with us, but um it just would. like how that formed the idea of what an american is in the minds of all these japanese people back then must have it, it must have been crazy yeah because you're just like we're we're like literally the founding of our nation is a is is already the beginning of melting pot of cultures and japan is specifically like the opposite of that where it's like yeah. actively other cultures go away don't even integrate a tiny little bit i mean it's still they like did that, then but, to an yeah. extent because of china and korea but like <laughs> They're like, you can only co talk to us here and only really specifically and only some topics. And they're, they're open now. They still don't want other people there, but they are open. Correct. <laughs> so it's one of those. It's like, you know, freaking uh, not RTS, like one of those. They're called God games, which feels like too powerful a term to use here right now. But it's like strategies. What? Yeah, but I'm trying to do real time strategy usually implies you have a military and there's an army. I'm talking like the old game, like populace, where you're just like trying oh, to build little like villages a, and like a black versus black and white or something like that. 
Oh uh, yeah, the game. To be clear, yeah. if people don't know, because that game's very ancient now, and I don't think it's even available anymore. Um, but like you can see, of like this is a nation that probably needed to open up. There's a thing to go back to One Piece because Wano is just that, and Wano's closed, and they're they were hurt by the factories mm. there, and they're better for opening. Even I'm though, sure that's exact. That's a hundred, well, hundred yeah. percent because Wano's Japan is, is hacks. So it's like, but that's so why I'm like curious. There's got to be a Commodore Perry Commodore type Perry? in there. Somebody else open them. I, maybe it's Kaido. I don't know. I gotta go. I gotta wait for that lady to get to Wano. She's mm. in. She's in whole cake right now. All right. Let me. Let me finish my notes. Let me. Let's. Let, let's wrap up the story. Finally, on March thirty first, eighteen fifty four, Perry signed the Convention of Kanagawa, which opened certain ports to the American ships, provided care to shipwrecked sailors, and the starting of an American consulate in one of those open ports. But no proper trade agreements were made. But as we've said, it's the first one is free. Like. These samurai are having a grand time in this tiny little train. Like, this is a miniature, I mean, a rideable train. It's like the same one that freaking Walt Disney has, like, 100 years later in his backyard, um, practically. Um, the actual document was written up in four languages because at the time there wasn't really good Japanese to English translation. <laughs> That's not really a thing, you know, the information getting out. Um, but there was two languages, both of them new people that spoke, which was Chinese and Dutch. So the document is written up in English, Japanese, Dutch, and Chinese. Mm. So from, uh, and just for fun uh, timing situation, because this constantly tickles me. So if that was in 1854, 60s years later about Demon Slayer takes place. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the story of Commodore Perry opening Japan. Awesome. I don't know. I I find history fascinating. No, I find is, history yeah. when like I don't know a lot about Asian history as much and when American history bumps into that in ways that I didn't learn about a lot in school. This freaking thing that we talk about a lot of Japan and the things that it's history and its culture. It's just funny to see those things bump up against each other. <laughs> like you can probably find more statues of Commodore Perry in Japan than you can in America. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. So I don't know. Fascinating story. Would would we have anime today if not for Commodore Perry? I don't know. That's a <laughs> stupid question to ask, but it's fun. But no, it's interesting to see because that's like it's like what what's the alternate timeline where one of the European powers opens up Japan and gets exclusivity yeah. there? What happens? I mean, I think there's a whole through line of like Japan opening up and then becoming imperialistic, and then because they Westernize, right. and part of Westernization is like, well, y'all are taking land. Well, we want to be like you guys. We're going to take land. Yeah. And they start taking land. So I, I think a lot of like like anime and stuff, that's sort of like a side effect of like World War Two. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm not I'm not saying that in like a legitimate questioning way. Yeah. I think it's just a that's that one's a silly one. There are times to ask silly questions that are legitimate. That was not one of them. But no, so that's, um, come, uh, what was it? January, not January, July 14th. We'll have to we'll have to crack open a sake and yeah. drink in a <laughs> slightly uncomfortable way <laughs> to this situation happening. We gave Japan the greatest gift of all freedom. I mean, technically, yeah. I mean, technically, yes, actually, like that's the funny, <laughs> that's like, that's the word, like, oh, they probably should have opened and like, I'm glad nobody died, but also imperialism, but like they didn't ever got colonized necessarily. So it's, uh, nobody died yet. It's a, we call that soft colonization. It's knocking on the kid the door. It's summertime, and you're trying to get all the kids together to play a game, and it's the one kid that won't come out, and you keep knocking on his door, and it's like, come out, or I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> You'll have a good time playing with the rest of the kids. Just fire your gun into the air outside his house. Yes, but say you're, say you're, you fire off a, a firework, but you're celebrating the 4th of July. This is how I celebrate. You don't want to <laughs> see... You don't want to see how I express my frustrations. I just love the idea of Perry getting pissed and going, no, we're not going to Nagasaki. Like that. It, <laughs> they keep going, what about Nagasaki? And then he's just like, shut up. Shut up, will you? I'm going to be frank with you. Nagasaki sucks. Yeah. We don't want it's it. It's an artificial island. That's a disrespect. To set foot on there would be disrespectful. I'm, I'm coming as an envoy of the president. If you know what that is, I don't know. All right. Well, thanks a lot for... That info down. Thank you, Commodore Perry, I think. If you didn't learn anything from that, you weren't paying attention. There you go. Learn Japanese history, learn American history, we're, we're learn some world politics of the time. We made reference to One Piece.
So there's an interesting phenomenon that has a sort of a standout incident that happened recently. Okay. There, uh, I hope everybody knows because they listen to Shonen Jumping the Gun, but there is a relatively new series that came out called Kagurabachi. Yeah, earlier uh, this year. That I was believe. actually, was that our first episode of Shonen Jumping the Gun? I think it might have been. Yeah, um, one of the first at the very least. I So I hope everybody listened to that. Um, but Kagurabachi was a very interesting start because Shonen Jump new series generally don't have tons of buzz in just Western me- no, media. No, we buzz about media. it, but we pay attention to that right. stuff. It doesn't usually make it out of our little bubbles. But for some reason, Kagurabachi specifically, and I know exactly why the reason is, but for some reason, Kagurabachi specifically blew up on social media, and it was just all over the place. It got memed to heck. It got memed to heck. Outside of the normal weeb circles, it was just everywhere now anime and manga does lend itself to memification a lot of the times just because of how ridiculous it can be um in in so many different series but like you you pull out these specific moments of them and and without the context they're just sort of crazy um especially when the series itself is really crazy like a jojo's bizarre adventure or something like that i'm sure everybody knows the uh the guys dancing on the boat thing yep the torture dance um that was a huge thing for a long time and i that was before uh i had even like gotten into jojo's bizarre adventure that was a while ago I mean, we can point. get into jojo means then but what's get back let's get back on kagurabachi you're getting distracted well so let's finish the story <laughs> the the interesting thing there was Kagurabachi actually turned out to be really good. <laughs> yeah, it helped it helped that it got this boost that it was actually genuinely a good new series. It's probably the first like actual hit that we have seen since paying attention to the yeah. magazine. And genuinely and oh, not just like we like it and it gets along. A lot of times when you have these sort of like flash in the pan anime or manga memes, it's cuz the series is like weird and off the wall and everything. Yeah, something strange in it happens. The fact that this one really took off and then it sort of kept going like the series itself lived up to the hype that it built up from the memes was a very interesting phenomenon that i'm not sure we saw we've ever seen anything exactly like that before because as i said memes all over the place for anime and manga yeah but most of the time it's it's just one off here and there it's not something that like sort of pushes the phenomenon itself. Mm, no, I mean, what, the, that the memes don't push the the thing they're from? Yeah, because, like, the, the meme is just, oh, there's the meme, that's funny. I would say it does. I feel like that's one of the popularity points of manga and anime. Well, people it, like it, us it will... lets people know about it, and then they go check it out. Like, I mean, there's a... I, I still want to set up what the actual, like, name topic of the segment is, but, like, I can get into it literally, like, a history of JoJo memes, because it stretches longer than i think you're thinking i mean i it's it's been going on for a while i just um i don't know i this could just be me not paying attention but it hasn't been my experience that those memes parlayed into additional viewership i would say it has jojo memes have been around for decades but i want to okay i'm taking the floor now okay i I thought we were going to set up with this segment about which was why are um anime and manga so easily mimetic more than pretty much anything mm-hmm. else. And I feel like, I mean, JoJo is the perfect example. Way back in the internet, before, when when all America had was, oh, what? I think we got Stardust Crusader manga Tanko Bonds translated, like, back in the 90s or early 2000s. And we got, also, we got Heritage to the Future, which is, like, the PS1 Dreamcast fighting game. And one of it, an early internet meme was Road Roller, was Dio going, Ree! Yeah. And the road roller, like road roller, from the that was f- decades from, before any of us knew actually what JoJo was with any sort of meaning and understanding. That was the uh, what is that an OVA? No, we I think Whatever. a lot of people got that from the video game. So I remember oh, seeing really? that sprite show up on stuff in like old Flash cartoons. Like I remember there was a a Stickman cartoon. Yep. Yep. So far back, 
that was like a recreation of that uh the steamroller because it's thing. wild because if you're just playing that game you don't have any context for what this is and it's i just this insane thing i had no idea what that was for the longest time that was at a point where i wasn't curious about that stuff it's just here's a funny thing i mean we on. wouldn't have had access to it but like it well, was curious yeah. it made me go years later i'm like oh that was jojo um with stuff like that i think think of other early internet memes all your base are belong to us is that not a japanese game that's inkerish like that's a yeah. poor translation and it was this thing that spread around there's just something about it's that it's the weird window that it gets kind of reflected through that we just got a lot of media from japan but i think because of the weirdness especially early on of how it came through and in, i mean in italy more now it fits in that it just it's stuck it something something about it stuck out to us and it stuck around more than anything else hmm. I'm trying to think of like what it all has in common and i don't i don't know what what catches people I mean, anime is hyper stylized. That's one thing. Yeah. But I, I think something that's hyper stylized, easily recognizable, like easily reproducible. And maybe that doesn't mean as much in like the, uh, the internet age where you can copy and paste anything, but like anyone can draw like an anime winky face. Anyone can draw like like even our emoji has the like the crying emoji there's one that has tears coming down in waves mm. and i feel like that that is an anime interpretation of crying yeah so here here's 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 a dual branch from that one of them is that cute art is already part and parcel with japanese culture i think we've mm -hmm. already seen that through their history like that is already a part of their art i mean we see chibi later on then but even before that like that's a thing and like chibi is a cutesy easily recreated, easily sellable thing that spreads around really easy because it's just a cute little thing and anybody can draw it because it's simple. Simple and cute and that's very spreadable, I think. Yeah. Um, but also, um, Ben, we were you were talking about this before we started on the, the original notes we made for this. I don't remember the term you used for it, but it's that idea, it's those visual shorthands which like manga kind of like birthed up where it's like we don't have multiple panels I don't want to draw all these things. I need to express this emotional or idea, this situational idea quickly. Right. So a bubble coming out of somebody's nose to indicate that they're sleeping. sleeping. Um, what was the other one? A hash mark on their When they're angry. Yeah. Or, or a big sweat. The sweat drop. The, the, their nose bleeding. Nervous. Oh, the nosebleed thing. That's a huge one because like the other ones, I'm like, okay, this is sort of realistic like somebody's sleeping they can have a snot bubble or like they're sweating because well, they they're nervous yes. or what right yeah but like the oh i saw something lewd so i had a violent nosebleed they like where does just, that come they from they used to just draw dicks they used to just draw erections and then i guess the westerners were like stop doing that but like <laughs> but i don't know how it how came did, to yeah. that but how like it's it, nosebleed it's that idea of a visual shorthand for something well i think it's kind of there's i think they're don't quote me on this i I don't super know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> I remember reading somewhere once upon a time that um, it's the uh, the blood pressure rising with yeah. arousal, and um, like we would say, hot blooded. Yeah, and um, for them, it's it's the nosebleed. But I think that's been a thing for longer than anime. Maybe they just have very weak. Uh nasal capillaries their blood apparently. flows differently when things get exciting <laughs> i don't know um but it's that idea of like here are visual shorthands that spread mimetically um because ben made the point of like none of them on their surface describe what is actually happening there is, yeah. it is an association made in the head it is a meme it is a unit of culture that spread and is now just what? commonplace to people who have and, taken it in and i think if you look back like this would be an interesting thing to actually look into but like can you find the first instance of the vein pop for anger? And then can you find like how over time does it become simpler and simpler? It becomes to, hieroglyphics. Yeah. To just being f four curved lines mm -hmm. see, forming a little cross. See loss becoming literally lines that you can draw <laughs> on a cave wall. Like it is just, this loss. It became so broken down into its base pieces 
but it also communicated ideas. It spread yeah. mimetically. That's the postmodernism of memes. What? The the complete breakdown to literal lines. Yeah. The simplest possible version of the meme. Right. It's it's it, it's a, an aspect like the internet is good now. I mean, the internet like memes were always around as long as human culture was around. This is the thing I always stand by. But they did not exist in the way that when people say a meme, they mean they mean a meme. Yeah. But when they say what they say is a meme is in the Venn diagram of the bigger circle of what actual academically speaking memes are. It is the it is the mimetic culture. Yes, it is the all all memes like people say it are the rectangles and they all exist or all squares and they exist in the big rectangle bucket that are memes academically. Mm. Yada yada yada. But I think now it's like I think yeah, just something between the internet of like anime and manga has weird strange stuff in it and that draws attention. Like what? I could probably give if you give me a minute, a few minutes, I could probably name like 10 different JoJo memes i'm thinking that there's probably at a, a minimum a through line here where the early well and even current the internet culture around memes originates with uh, a lot of people who are in the weeb community already yeah. and so there's that's a, a well of content that they can that they're going to easily draw. They from. are. This is them sharing the things that they like, the wild moments they want to go. Like, oh man, check this out. Right. When when anime and manga were not as mainstreamy as it is now in America, that you could go like, look out this, look at this crazy thing. This dude's freaking dropping a steamroller on somebody and then punching, and he's throwing knives and he goes Cree! like all this insane stuff. Like, you want to share with your buddy so it breaks down to those most base parts to spread around of like this is eye catching. This is something that stands out. This was a moment people remembered, and then it spreads from there. I mean, I, I mean, I, I can't stop going back to JoJo because JoJo is like flush with memes. There's mm. something, there's something about JoJo that just makes it so meme solvent. I mean, what? See the see the to be continued meme that went around for ages. Yeah, still, that is literally just the the image fading in on a on another you know video and strains of roundabout like but like we all learned what that meant mimetically yeah so like there's there's something that comes out of japan that i think it comes out of japan more than like anywhere else of like the 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 culture of cute is just infectious like if you had told my 2006 self that one day the the default emoji the default crying emoji on my phone was going to look like anime crying like <laughs> anime tears yeah i mean all emojis are built from i'm sure from and it's be it's because the, the people Asian who art. make the emoji packs now they they grew up with anime you know, there's also that thing, Ben, what you just said about, uh, it makes me go, well, all of the image board stuff where so much of these image memes originated, that's that's a Japanese thing to start with. Yeah. Like the, the 4chans and, and stuff like that. That, I mean, obviously the West took over a lot of that. Um, but they in, still have the their, years, their image but they, boards in Japan but that those, are really popular. Those image boards were primarily a Japanese thing to start off with. Well, 2chan was a Japanese board. There's, you know, uh, was it 2chan? Was that the first one? I but I mean, so. it's got right. Chan in the name. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> the internet what? The internet was a perfect breeding ground for memes. And one of the first things that it was given was connections to Japan. <laughs> yeah, image boards. Like, this was already a thing in Japanese culture. It spread on the early internet. These are the weebs, which is a sort of more specific uh, niche of people back in the day when it was super embarrassing to be into anime. I keep forgetting that that's how it was because it's just so <laughs> effing mainstream now. Freaking my sister's boyfriend is an anime and he's in his, like, freaking 50s or something. I don't know. Um, what a nerd. I don't know. <laughs> One time I see her and she has a keychain from like Attack on Titan. I'm like, why do you have that? <laughs> you, 
You don't know what that is. You're a normie. You're not allowed to have that. You're not sitting, any other one but that one. Because <laughs> instantly my alarm bells go off when it's Attack on Titan. Of like, I don't know what the deal is. Oh, no. no is back, your sister a custard fascist? Back, no, my sister is not a custard fascist. <laughs> I saw a dude. Or I think my, no, my wife saw a dude who had a tattoo of Aaron Yeager on his arm. Mm-hmm. That could have and been from said, season one. You don't know. Like well, that's said, the problem. Like yeah, Attack on what? Titan fans are custard fascists. Did he have long I hair? I said, what did his hair look like? Mm-hmm. It was ponytail Aaron. Oh. Wait, the person who had the tattoos hair or the, 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 the tattoo, tattoo of Aaron, Aaron hair? It was ponytail Aaron. Is that earlier yeah, or later? That's late. That's Ooh, late. It's not good. That's not good. That's Aaron wearing an open coat with no shirt as he walks around looking like a badass. Yeah. Oof. Which Doing a genocide. There's there's a sliver of time in there where you could go, oh, he didn't know yet. It was season one, it was just the intro was no, rad, no, no. I mean, when like he, Walking Dead. When he had long hair. Yeah. We there was a there was a sliver of time after that time skip that we we didn't know yet. <laughs> well, okay, let's let's think. Because this is this is a thing we do a lot of going like, oh, this is all in Japan, and then we go like, well, no, we have this in America. What else is such an engine for memes outside of anime here? And the one that comes to my head right now is SpongeBob, admittedly. Yeah, like SpongeBob is an infinite engine of memes in the same way JoJo Which is, is, but a lot of that is just based on that's shared just an American anime. Yeah, it's shared upbringing. Well, I think but we don't have that with anime as much. I mean, it's cyclical. Like a lot of the Popeye stuff and the Looney Tunes, like vaudeville stuff got brought into early anime but for america i'd say it's probably movies i mean you see them using american movies in uh anime now True, as yeah. memes the chainsaw yeah. man opening is it's just literally movies yeah it's yeah. Just a series of memes i but no I, I think it's hollywood for us i i like i like that that happens that there's this weird kind of cultural exchange exchange is the keyword because it's not just oh we're taking all their stuff or we're giving them all our stuff yeah it's definitely there there's that there's that future episode that someday if i finally sit down and do the research of hamburger shonen it's coming it's not it's not appropriation it's appreciation it's 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 an exchange it's evolution we're trading we're mutating it's trading cards (laughs) we're making each other better you give us Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, we'll give you Magic the Gathering. I don't know who no. got more effed up by that. Probably <laughs> we gave us. more than we got there, as, I don't think except we got, Pokemon. I don't think they got as much for Magic that we got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! Were you telling me that, or was I just listening to a podcast while walking down the steps to the studio area that there was a... No, I think that was from a podcast where there was a Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament. And part of it is that you have to specifically submit the a list of the cards in your deck. And if one of them, if there's an extra one and one is not there, you get disqualified. Mm. And somebody attempted to to skirt the rules of that by taking one of their opponent's cards, eating it, and then calling one of the tournament heads over and going, this person doesn't have, is missing one of the cards on their list. Wow. That's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fascinated, but also I, pro- I want nothing to do with that human. That human is probably... Right? No, no, that human is either like thinking at fifth level chess and it was they thought it was funny or they're like fifth level rancid don't talk to this human they probably need a shower yeah so that actually sounds like they might need evaluated yeah that is i would say like 99 95 percent that five percent like somebody just fucking around <laughs> and thought of like a like a dumb but yeah but then i don't think you would it turns out it. the card he ate was worth like 700 dollars. yeah <laughs> I've eaten your pot of greed, which I, whatever. I don't think that's trying to. Regardless, um, I mean, yeah, Pokemon's freaking mimetic as heck. And that's the like that there, is a cutesy virus that spread. Yeah. Like it's all over the internet. <laughs> Jelly donut. Um, <laughs> Jelly donut. There's there's also, and I think Ben was was touching on this already. Um, but this this through line we have because emojis are somewhat mimetic. Yeah, and they're from Japanese they're, reaction little faces that they right. draw to ASCII art. But even, I mean, beyond that, I mean, just like, just the way that we use them today um, for for various things. I mean, like, the freaking eggplant emoji, which is like, 
whoever put that in there in the first place in into Unicode or whatever it was, was like, oh, yeah, we have broccoli and we have a tomato and here's an eggplant and blah, blah, blah. Here's a peach. And yet that turned into what it is today. Correct. Which, if you don't know, don't look. Um, come on the Discord. We'll explain it to you. Um, but as Ben was saying, like so many of those emojis have migrated from the the original Japanese ASCII emojis. Yeah, which Memetic, uh, uh, image short uh, image shorthand. We we yeah. go back to the thing we were talking about in manga, where it's like, how do I capture this emotion succinctly? And I I think it's it's interesting because it's the kind of thing where we have this this communication that happens where like written and spoken language doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you don't speak Japanese, that the Japanese person doesn't speak English. These tiny little pictures convey so much information about a person's feelings with no words. It's, it's a, it's a mimetic form of communication. Yeah. It's why the freaking anime and manga memes when we were growing up spread around so much because these are these insane visual situations that you don't necessarily, because they're probably not dubbed if they even have any audio, like freaking, I, I mean, it's probably a little later than that time period. I'm like thinking of like Nietzsche Joe where you see the president or the school principal suplex that deer. Yeah. I and it's like, that's an image that, that floats one. around. <laughs> I was thinking about that Because it's like earlier. an insane thing that you would just see or like any, like just little gifts of like weird old anime stuff because it was yeah. something that spoke to people at a niche community and they it spread around and you just by virtue of the internet being a, a an open place of things people can just happen upon and be like oh what's that like it's very Old what's man that driving in a car eyes go wide <gasps> oh that one's my favorite what i don't even know what that's from neither do i um what is uh, i don't what did you just say there's the guy just... he's as a japanese guy he's driving in the car and he's just like smiling and then his eyes oh, then go goes, wide Rrr. Because he like th remembered something. Oh, is that anime? I always yeah, thought that was like an Boondocks or one of the studios that did that because no, it looks very not. like that style. I know what you're talking about, um, but no, that's that's an anime. That's I mean, yeah, yeah, that's an anime. Um, I at one point I found out what silly, that was from. Silly but I don't faces, remember it. silly faces that you can use to express ideas to other people. But that one's great, or just they're funny. And you that share one them. has evolved so much because originally it was just like a GIF reaction for the yeah. longest time, but now. You can literally just have the static picture of him in the car, looking normal, like before. And you know he has what it reaction, is. You, you you're like, oh, two frames. I mean, I you know, don't even yeah. need that if you know it. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I'm, I'm, I, I find this interesting because you know, like, as uh, interested in language and stuff like Ben is and everything. Like, there's obviously a lot of interesting thing there about how language evolves and uses use in different ways and, and understanding different languages, having grown up with one and everything. But like this idea that we have these cross cultural languages that don't involve like specific words or writing systems. And yet we can understand each other in, in those ways, short of like actually having, you know, details, but uh, emotional some thoughts emotional communication it's 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 fascinating i'm going to attempt to punch above my weight class <laughs> okay. and i'm probably going to get clobbered and be uber wrong so bear with me for a moment but i'm going to make i'm going to make a pitch of ideas that have clinked together in my head so japan by virtue of having what are the what are their main symbols called like not their alphabet -y symbols but it's like this symbol means this and it's red like this what well, are those there's kanji 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 and there's Hiragana. Which is essentially, a, a, is supposed to be, to Katakana. an extent, a pictorial language, is it not? Yeah, it's just Chinese. Do you think it's just born out of that, and just because we're better bros with Japan, we just, that was where we got it from, and we weren't good bros with China, so we just didn't get it from them? And Korea doesn't get to count because Japan and China said so? Mm, I don't know. I think it partly it's just China 
until very recently was not exporting a lot of culture yeah. beyond like the kung fu movie Ch china the, is also a lot more of a culturally like japan is more culturally homogeneous to itself it can more specifically go this is what we're about and they can it can be it in the way that we get on anime and all of its culture stuff it, its culture could be more specifically exported because its culture is clearer because it is a more homogeneous nature than china which is like over its history a bunch of different kingdoms which i guess to an extent japan is too but then we get the lockdown, like a bunch of different kingdoms breaking up, coming back together. Like we in the West understand it as China, but it's also like a bunch of different things and a bunch of different Japan groups of people. Japan was Japan and just Japan for longer as a cultural entity. I mean, what? It is at least closed down for over 250 years. That's enough time to create a, a cultural homogeneous thing. Yeah. And I don't know if China has the same sort of like ruling and or structure for that right. long for i mean stretch. i don't know that to, to that, to that extent from there's ignorance. there's like 17 different chinese languages something like that yeah. it's every time i i see like a map of like oh where do they speak these things it's like because the main ones you know are mandarin yeah. obviously and cantonese mm -hmm. that's the other big one that i hear but there's so many other ones and when you see it on the map some of them are also very big areas, and you're like, wait a minute. I thought it was just everybody spoke Mandarin. That's Mandarin Chinese, right? That's the thing. But it's like, no, China is tons of different cultures yeah. sort of all under one umbrella. Now, I mean, these days they're trying to make it homogeneous, um, but because of the uh, the warring factions nature of it for such a long time, that's not something that happened until recently, where, as like we're saying with Japan, it was going on for longer. So, yeah, so my point is Japan is already predisposed towards communicating through images because they're already using kanji, which are already supposed to be, to an extent, pictographics, even if they're more abstract. And then that then flows into their culture is exported. That concept is exported with it. That works its way into their art. And it makes its way to us through whatever form that is. That's an interesting. And really, that's the, there's to, the the two branches of this this conversation is images being able to communicate ideas and us being able to gain ideas on that what they communicate and that we all kind of learn that spread like memes, which they are memes. And then also the other branch is anime and manga has some insane shit in it that can be captured in a single image or a GIF that is then shared and passed around, going, "Oh my gosh, look at this thing that happened." Mm. Or this silly thing, or like we put running in the '90s to this child being pulled along <laughs> in a little car. Uh, ben, do you think there's a there's a through line with um, Japanese writing systems being pictographic that lends itself to them creating these emoticons more readily than like? Because I'm thinking of the history of you know, emoticons in, in the United States and like Western English speaking countries. And it's sort of like, oh, we have the colon and the semicolon. The is punctuation, what we use. yeah. Whereas to make these, the faces. these Japanese originating ones are like so many more characters in there to create more complex features. Yeah, I mean, there's something to it. Like, like if you look at the kanji for tree, looks kind of like a tree like you can see how that that simplified from a picture of a tree to just like the the various points of a tree but to me like if you look at the kanji for cat it looks nothing like a cat <laughs> um so i i don't know I, I do think there's something there about like they and this this is Chinese. Like they took the yeah, writing they, system from China. Correct. Um, so uh, I think countries that use Chinese symbols or any kind of like logogram, pictograph language, writing system, they have an advantage on like creating, I don't know, simplified concepts out of just a couple of lines they can communicate more with less yeah this is always an issue in like especially early localization where it's like you have two lines of text ja original japanese says all of this right good luck english you're, you're we're not programming it to give you more lines good luck <laughs>
Yeah. Well, and they also have like so many different meanings baked into their writing system. Whereas like we kind of got hamstrung by the printing press. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, I mean, even just looking at the way that uh, keyboards look between like China, Japan and versus English keyboards, um, like your, your printing press where you had to put individual letters in yeah. one at a time we to build the writing stuff. system. Yeah. Like with one alphabet you get, yeah, your 26 letters times two for capitals plus well, in zero, to, zero to nine. We lost a lot of letters that we had. Like we had that big fancy S that looked like an F. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the ye old, whatever it's not actually ye. It's the thorn. It's a th. The thorn. Yeah. Yeah. I know that one. <laughs> uh, and that didn't make it into the printing press. They're just like, we'll use a TH. <laughs> it's close. Whereas you, that. you go for Chinese or Japanese. Now suddenly you have to have hundreds of different things times. However many you need to be able to print them multiple times on a page. Like that seems insane to yeah, me. That is insane. But you can also, you're capturing more with less, but also you have more things to capture. Yeah. So well, and like culturally, culturally, they just like it. I mean, America tried. Said. Yeah. America tried to get Japan to just go to Kana, and there's a lot of reasons Japanese doesn't really work with Kana. You'd have to add spaces for one, um, because it's very easy to, to like. There's not that many sounds in Japanese, so a lot of words look the exact same if you just write them in Kana. Mm. Um, but they push back really hard against that. Like America was really pushing after world war two. It's like, you will come up much faster. If you simplify this writing system, we need to get literacy rates up and this is just too complicated. And they're like, no, we'll just solve it with systemic abuse. <laughs> As we Beat always have. We'll just make another different but, uh, language system, but not the one you asked for. It's always worked in the we'll past. Make a langu- we'll make an entire alphabet for babies. <laughs> we'll beat the children until they know 2,400 characters. Insanity. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I'm speaking as an Indian American, so. <laughs> um, well, before we wrap this up, uh, there's just one more quick thing I wanted to hit because... Um, in our notes here, uh, Ben has something specific about Will Eisner. Did you want to expand on that? Oh, the the inspiration for this was kind of, um, I've talked about it before on the podcast. Will Eisner is a big figure in comic books. He, he did the spirit. Um, he, I think, coined the term sequential art. Whoa. And um, I mean, the spirit was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And he also is the, you know, the Eisner award. He's the namesake of that. All right. Um, he has in his book, sequential art, a whole thing on using the, the tools available to you, like the culture knows these shortcuts you don't have to reinvent the wheel use he basically says use what what we might call memes oh so use recognizable images so will eisner would have loved isekai are you specifically talking about the art <laughs> die <laughs> shine even cease to be at this blasphemy but yeah, yes, um, images, art. <laughs> yeah, like we we have, and, and and a lot of this stuff in the old comics comes from like the big overstated silent movie dramatics of mm-hmm. like a guy who's surprised, jumping up in the air with his arms out and his legs in front of him, acting the, to the rafters. The, yeah, the eyes coming out of the head, the the heart beating out of the chest. Like there's there's just easy ways to communicate that like in one panel this guy's having a strong emotional reaction and he does talk a little bit about how like he uses hieroglyphs to talk about how it evolves but 
No, I thought it was interesting. I think it definitely applies to a lot of like reading that book with anime in mind. It's interesting to see how strong the influence has been. It's a lot more connected than we we would have thought that far back. No, I think there's a direct line there from Will Eisner going, here's how you can get across a bunch of stuff in a single panel to here's an image on the internet that expresses an emotion that many people can feel and that will spread the yeah. the the medic nature of the whole thing is completely connected it's been i mean you said it earlier all of human history we just didn't have a word for it until recently well we've had a word for it since whenever whatever language meme is from is just recently it became culturally Richard known Dawkins. instead of scientifically known did he coin that phrase or did or did he just start using it meme the most? instead of gene? A meme is a cultural unit That's that right. evolves similar to a gene. Yep. The memes, Jack. Metal Gear Solid referenced it decades before it became a thing on the internet and they were right. He was right. Well, good for Richard Dawkins. He he might be onto something. <laughs> Little yeah. Kojumbo. Well, well, there you have it. Yeah. I think it feels like we just scratched the surface on it a little bit. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot going on. Uh, we didn't We need more we need more academic backing, but I yeah, think we, there's something here. We didn't we didn't do intense research on this one yeah, like no. we did like you did for Commodore Perry. Yeah. Um but it's an interesting con- conversation to have and um you know, tying it back to Kagurabachi, I think there's there's something interesting there in the way that these memes can sort of potentially bring light to things that people wouldn't otherwise see. It brings attention to things. Yeah. You go, what's that? You dig through it. Good stuff. Hey, did you know that in Japan, they have different kinds of foods than we have in the West? Wow. Well, if you're curious about it, you should check out Sugoi Mart. Sugoi Mart has a wide variety of snacks and drinks from Japan that you can't get anywhere else, as well as toys and merch from the land of the rising sun. Wowzers! For example, I have with me today some Kit Kat, some Japanese Kit Kat, which we think are just white chocolate. Ben, can you see that? No, I can't really make it out. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, I do think it's white chocolate, though. The book said it was um, white chocolate. I'm going to open them up and see. Brad does not believe me, the validity of my statement. I believe you. I was just trying to make sure. Oh, they're a little bit melted. I recognize the character for white. It's because they're yeah, sent. Yeah, that's enough. They were sent from Japan, and so they sat in some hot stuff for a little while, unfortunately. It's that, it's that box mm-hmm. with a line in the middle and a little hat on it. That's the character for white. I've got some little cherry gummies that came with its own little toothpick, and they are really good. They're popping cherry. Yeah, I think Ooh, it's just word choice. Chocolate. <laughs> Not intentional. Can you tell what those are called? Um, no. Hakujin means white person. <laughs> is, is the jin the person part? Is that where we get gaijin, a foreign person? Yep. Look at me learning things. It's cherry something. Nihon jin, America jin. Yeah, you also get like a toy or little thing that are just slowly becoming fidget toys for me around the house. I want to say last box we got. That's specifically Japan Crate, which is not, it's affiliated with Sugoi Mart. Oh, okay. But many of the items that we get in the crate, Sugoi Mart will s- sells individually. Correct. Because we got some, they're like pretend fake soda little plastic containers that have like gak goo in them. And let me tell you, somebody likes fidget toys. It's <laughs> really fun playing around with that goo. I also have some kind of rice cake treat thing here. Can you see that, Ben? You know what that says? A-B. <laughs> I don't know That's what that says. A-B? <laughs> A-B. A-B. Uh, yeah, there's not really much else on here. Should have grabbed the booklet. The booklet as... There's a booklet that comes with the box that tells you things. Oh, there's a lot in here. Holy crap. Ooh. It's like a little tray of little rice crackers. Ooh. These cherries are delight. I mean, they're rice crackers. There's not a whole lot of flavor, but they're 
It's nice. We got a very. I think nice there's furikake on here. With the wave with art that was essentially the wave on it. That was it was, it was a nice fan. Hmm. Did not feel the cheapest. Some of these have more flavor than other ones. It's actually mm. really good. Oh man, I'm just gonna sit here and eat all these. We're all eating. It's a good time. That's this could be you. You could have been enjoying these same exact treats. If you go to Segoy Mart. Well, as a special offer, our listeners can click the link in the description or use code APR15 at checkout to get 15% off their first order. So check out Segoy Mart today. Thank you, Segoy Mart. So, as everybody knows, our, our last episode was Review Stravaganza the third. The triple. Our third year. And as we've been uh, going through all of our episodes, we're at episode 31 now, which is crazy. Um, I thought now would be a good time to start a new kind of thing for our, our manga book club, where we sort of roll back the clock a little bit and revisit some of the series that we've talked about in the past. Since it's been so long... It's been a long time. A lot of these series have moved very far on from where they were when we originally talked about them. So, to kick things off, we're going to roll back to our very first episode, and we're going to talk about Freerin. Wow. So, so no Freerin. Or fr freer and after funeral, or oh, is that what that means? What's I didn't know. I never knew the full title. Um, what's the, what's the? <laughs> I forget. So the, so no freer. What's the English title now? <laughs> freer and beyond journeys. Beyond and, journeys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, more, and probably like, as a good a transi translation as you're going to get. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's actually a really good point, which is we are so far along in freer and that it now has an anime. And in fact, a really, really good anime. Literally a great, not even just like, oh, the best of that season, like genuinely like a, we're going to be talking about this one right. for a long time and recommending it. So not even a, a, a glimmer in anyone's eyes in anime back then, I would say. Um, I did not uh, re-listen to the episodes, but um, I know that we talked about Freerin on that first episode. And I want to say that we were at like, 30 chapters or less at that point. It was really early that would, on. That would, been, that would have been pre um, the the wizard training, right? Yeah. Yeah, because like, I, I, I can picture me talking about losing steam on the manga in my main room, which gives me a timeline of when we recorded it. Yeah. But um, yeah, wow, wow. So much has happened. We've yeah. got a lot, like we're more... I don't know how up to date the physical manga releases have been in America, but um, I will. Uh, I guess well, you hey, back then we didn't have the freaking Viz app having its own set that has free right now. That wasn't even a thing back then. Well, and so the currently on the Viz app, uh, we are up to chapter one hundred and thirty. Out of how many though? What do you mean out of how many? Is that all that's out in Japanese? I think so. Because yeah. before we had to yeah. wait for the Tanko Bonds, and they were I'm pretty behind because you read ahead on. Yeah, the no, right? they're doing. I'm pretty sure they're, they're doing. I'm sure it's simul now. Well, hasn't it stopped? Uh, no. it, it's it's weird because um, when I first started reading it, it came out very consistently the whole time, and then right before the anime came out, there was a break, and now it seems like they're not on a very consistent schedule. Sometimes right season two of the anime, comes maybe out, they're on a break. sometimes they'll be like a bunch of chapters week after week, and then it'll stop for a while. And so right now- How long's a um, while though? I think the last chapter came out nearly a month ago. So okay. I it, it might be was, like I month remember hearing about a hiatus like a while back. Yeah, I told you about that. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was right around when the, the anime was gonna be coming out. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, the, the creator went on a break before it would probably right. produce on the anime. And so I can only hope that that's what's going on now because season two of the anime is gonna be crazy. Uh, 
every everybody who has watched the anime, uh, I'm sure pretty much everybody's on the same page that it's amazing. Um, but as we got to the end of the first season and we um, we met all these people during the uh, the tournament arc, the the mage exam arc, um, the uh, the old man. Oh God, I'm blanking on his name now. Um, Is it by the D? Denkin. Denkin. Um, Some Denkin. I didn't even know Denkin last time we talked about Freerin. We hadn't yeah. met any of these people. The uh, the main arc that's going to take place in season two is going to revolve around Denkin and sort of Ooh. his uh, uh, his, his backstory master. and like what he's trying to accomplish and that kind of stuff. And we're going to meet one of the most compelling and interesting demons villains of the whole thing it's just i i think it's the best arc of the entire series i'm so excited to get it in the anime big words um the i don't know i don't know if i feel as strongly about it as you do really i liked it um the one and now without getting into too many spoilers there's there's two demons. There's there's mocked, and then there's like that witch demon. Yeah, she plays less of a role because it sort of, uh, it sort of revolves around Denkin and mocked and their yeah. relationship. And because mocked is really weird for a demon, and people are going to get into this arc and go like, "Wait, Freeran was wrong. Demons aren't just all monsters." Like people are going to revert back to their their. Episode one, two, three feelings on be demons like right the whole time, um, and you know, it's not a wrong feeling to have. It's a very interesting and compelling storyline. Um, I was, I've been, I've been in the camp of demons are like tigers, basically the whole time. I, I never really questioned Freerin when she said, "No, they're monsters." The Everything they do, including talking to us and quote unquote empathizing is just a way for them to hunt us. Um, but it is a really interesting look and exploration of the way that can play out. So um, if if you're not on board with Freerin yet, now's a really good time. You can go, you can watch the first All season of the anime. Proper season one is out because the two cores got separated. Uh, that's how they do things now. The English version it. is completely out now yeah. if you need to watch it that way. I don't particularly we'll recommend it, but it's not bad. The The new arc, the, the mocked arc, is a lot better than the mage exam arc. Yes. It's more in free range. Freeran plays best and, with emotion and character right. study and I, I not didn't, combat. I didn't dislike the Mage Exam arc, especially as you know Kermit fell off of it at that time. Yeah. Um, I watched the anime then. I the anime the elevated Kermit. it. I was on the yeah, fence of sure. of you know is the anime making it better in the early episodes? I was basically like, it's this is a very good representation of the manga, but it's not really. Elevating it, it, but when we really early, actually, no, when we got further on, yeah, and especially into the mage exam arc, it's like, oh, this is really, really good. (laughs) This is really doing something. I get to play with a lot more, and it moves along nicely. Yeah. Yes, the pacing. Oh, that was. I mean, what is it? Was twenty seven episodes, right? Something like that. The mage exam. I sort of said for reading in the anime, it could have been a little thing. I know you're a lot keener on it than I am. I still think it got bogged down a little bit with too much with too many people. I didn't care about, but I know at least in the anime, it coming out of it that it kind of felt like it slimmed up and got more back to what made free reign. There's there's something important there which we didn't quite get to in the anime yet. Um, A lot of the characters, and not really the ones that you don't like, but a lot of the characters. get some exploration and backstory, which I think we'll get in the second season, um, especially with Denkin, obviously. Yeah, but he's some the of one the I want to know more about. Um, it'll be later in the second season uh, with Land and um, Ubel. There's there's more of an exploration of them. Um, okay. And that, I think... Y- you maybe could have gone about it in a different order, but like you sort of need... 
in order to do their emotional explorations. You, you need other world information yeah. from other people. Yeah. So, yeah. But no. So it, oh, sorry, you go, Ben. No, I was going to say, I actually have one criticism of Freeran. As a whole or the anime yeah. specifically? or Well, yeah, as a whole, I guess. Um, and it's one thing that's been bothering me. And now that I've read like 130 chapters, uh, I can tell you, I think we might've went way too hard on sign way too fast <laughs> for somebody who still has not shown back up. Yeah. It's uh, when this happened in the anime too, because like when you get to him, it's like, Oh my God, we got a fourth companion. We needed this. Um, and then like, Within he learned to trust Freeran. Wow, right. how will that pan out? Within like six it's chapters, priest, right? he's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's. I forgot. Like the anime was like how quickly he is there and gone. I'm like, oh, I yeah. miss him. Like, and yeah, now we're 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 past the Denkin arc. We're into this uh, weird Empire arc that sort of started a couple chapters ago, like, which is like Cold War. Yeah, yeah. There's like assassins involved and everything. Oh, it's really geez. sort of crazy. And we're not entirely sure what's going on yet. Um, and signs still nowhere to be found. And it's There's just no like, sign of him. Uh, you, you no built him up to be really Thank important. You, Thank you. Why did you? Brad, Brad just completely steamrolling. No, I got it. Okay. I can't laugh loud. That's fine. I will, <clears> you I just, I saw the chuckle on your lips. That's all I needed. Um, but yeah, it's like they, they build him up so much and he was a very important character for those couple episodes. And he's just gone. Just, the author was just like, I'm done. And maybe that's on purpose. Maybe that's the point is that we can have these very short relationships that feel so important at the time. And it's not that it wasn't important, but it's just we thought they were going to last much longer and they didn't. And that's okay. People make those connections. See, see One Piece, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chapters later, people are like, yeah, but Vivi's a, a, a straw hat. She's going to turn the crew proper, right? And it's just like... <laughs> But that's the thing. It's like, even though in the grand scheme of One Piece, she wasn't around with the crew that long. But like, when you make that emotional connection, it sticks yeah. around with you that it's like, this is how it should be. So I understand your point, Ben. But, you know, that might have been on purpose. That might be to to be an exploration of a specific part of Freerin's emotional journey. Or maybe he just didn't yeah. fit and the author just wanted to stop writing him. <laughs> Well, I think the author definitely introduced him earlier than they were ready. Maybe. Because he is coming back because he's connected to craft and the age of the goddess. And so is Zeri. Um, so they're obviously going to get into that at some point because that's the deep lore of the world that even Freerin doesn't know. Well, Siri is back now <laughs> in the Empire arc. Um, yeah. But you're lucky I don't remember names very well and don't know what you're you're lucky I can't. don't tell me I don't want to know. She's the elf. I'm sure. The one you hate. Yeah. There's a bunch of other names. I don't care. The the foot Yeah, I know. Elf. I know. Oh, the Um Weird gross bare feet. I generally trust this manga. Um oh. short of their horrible misuse of German, which personally I can forgive. Sorry Cake Dwarf. Um I think that a, a, their setups and payoffs are done very well. Um, I know that, you know, obviously, Kermit, you've got some parts that you aren't all about. You know, My trust was but, never broken. Nothing was ever bad. It was just like, this isn't what I came to the grocery mm -hmm. store for. But for me, every, every setup has had its payoff and every, um, every path taken has resulted in some kind of learning experience. So I'm I'm still, I'm fully on board. I am riding this train to the end. So I, I hope, I mean, I know other people really like it as well, but um, I hope it, I hope it keeps this up. I'm looking forward to season two. I mean, it, what, it's going to run out of things for the anime to cover before. Anything. I think they probably have enough for a season two right now, but that would be it. Yeah, um, I don't. You'd have to wait for a while. It's always the trouble yeah. when things get popular, and it's like it's going to be a while until there's enough to warn it. Plus, I can't wait to just get more of that like massive animation budget spent on just the most innocuous things. I love that. There's got to be a word for that, right? 
Like somebody's it's, got to make some pun yeah. off of Sakuga that describes. Yeah, it's the, like, like Sakuga, a character, except a, a character abuse. I'm on the one that sticks to me that I posted about. It was like freaking Ducktales of like uh, Louis. Uh, what the heck is it? Louis ab- abuses the animation budget. Mm. And it's just like really innocuous little movements that are just like you have way too much movement and frames in this, yeah, for no reason. But it's just my favorite when that happens. Sakuga might still be the right word, but a lot of it's times a we think of form that of it, though, because that's uh, in like yeah. big actiony moments, and right. this is like like you said, like a man putting a coat on, somebody right. gesturing with their hands. Like there's just their little life movements, and I really yeah. like that. So, yeah, Freren still going strong. We're all about it. Our baby's all grown up. Um. And yeah, we need our help. Uh, we might have to revisit Freerin again in the future, in another three years. <laughs> hey, it was only, it'll be six years by then. That's not that long, right? Um, so uh, to continue this trend, uh, we are now going to also talk about Spy Family. Since we don't have a full segment for Freerin, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about Spy Family, which was, was our second uh, manga book club. That's wild to think about. Back before it had an anime, before yep. the anime was a twinkle in anyone's eye. And it was still, do Do you remember what it was, what arc they were in at the time or what was happening? I don't, but it was very it early It would have to on. have been post-tennis, right? Post-tennis um, pre-cruise ship? Yeah, you're right. It was definitely post tennis because that was a big part of our discussion. We gushed was like, about tennis a lot. It does a different genre all the time, and it's and that's all that's all pre freaking Lloyd's World War II flashback, which yeah. is like incredible. Like that's we're probably getting that in season two. But Spy like, Spy Family just hit chapter one hundred. That's that's insane to me. Which how does it just hit hundred? Just barely. And Akane Banashe has been at 100 for a while. And Sakamoto Day, like, whatever. No, 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 cooling down, cooling down. This is he, weird. He he releases on a very irregular schedule. Yeah, yeah. he gets to because he's freaking, he's writing bangers. The current arc we're in right now with, with Elegant. Yeah, for a while, um, there was there was a point where, like, chapters weren't releasing and then you'd get, like, uh, like a point one, a point, point two. Point which is like a, um, like a yeah, a... Just a, a short few pages little thing, of like a little gag yeah. or like a cute drawing of like and then, I was doing this or that, and then you'd get like three or four weeks in a row of like a tiny little arc, and then it would you'd have to wait again. Is it is I wonder if there's another manga that has this few chapters and already has an incredible season of anime, and the thing that's the kicker is has a movie and a video game. Yeah, like that's insane. So yeah, like, it doesn't just, even have a hundred chapters, and it already has a. a um, a, a movie that is not just like we put some of the episodes together, right? And a video game that's like a legit video game. Well, and the thing is, and and we'll get to this in a, another revisit uh, in an episode or two. Um, but Akane Banashi and Sakamoto Days do not have an anime yet. Nope. We have had Sakamoto Days a, is on the horizon. Did they announce it, or is it still just? I think they announced the Sakamoto Days anime. It's coming it's later this year, like, in or early next year. Yeah. So on Netflix, they said, but Sakamoto Days is at like one sixty or something it's like that. It's getting up there, yeah. And and so, you know, it's not that Freerin or Spy Family is worse than Sakamoto Days, but it's sort of like we're confused how it had to wait this long. But it's so, but it's so, it's still so good. It does everything so well. But we'll talk about that on another episode. Yeah, uh, just because right now, as we're opposed to Spy about... Family, which we talk about on every episode, it's <laughs> it's it's just it's. It's the like, of course it's good. Every like all the arcs are so fascinating. I mean, what from the last time we talked about, like said we had the cruise ship arc that we thought was going to be a movie and we were wrong. Um, they still probably could have made a movie. They could have made yeah. money putting that in the theater. It's just what they did and putting a little extra bits and pieces in it. Um, like I said, Lloyd's Lloyd's World War Two flashback, which like it's been a hot minute since mm. I've read it because that's at least been a year or more. But like I remember that being super emotional. Um, the terrorists taking over the bus. Um, oh yeah! Right now we're an incredibly compelling like romantic storyline between the headmaster, two side characters. <laughs> yeah, two side the headmaster and the um, um, the black what's her bells, uh, the butler, butler Becky's bodyguard butler. Yeah. lady, Martha. And it's like the most compelling romance. <laughs> it's just like oh, like it's 
And it just, it's so effortless that it just does all these yeah. things and it connects them all together in a way of like, oh, these characters are also connected to the war and this is their incredibly compelling social happenings through this. Like, I don't usually read romances, but like relationship stuff for some, like when it's snuck into me, I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> uber compelled by this. That's why I love freaking hell of a boss and has been. Because it's just all these messy relationships. Yeah, Endo takes his time to write. He doesn't have that freer and uh, sign problem. <laughs> And just like oh. the way, just again, like we've said, it's the same. It's like there's so much that has happened in Spy Family, but it's the same thing we said last time. It's just so effortless in doing all these different things, yeah, and and stringing them together in a way that feels meaningful. That we could just be wasting, t quote unquote, wasting time forever, and still, like, I don't care because it constantly th feels like the world is being fleshed out, and like meaningful emotional stories yeah. are being told, and like funny things are happening. And that's you know that's something that. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned this in the original uh, manga book club for it, but it's something we've talked about since then is that, you know, when we say, oh, it can waste time, there's not actually any wasted time. Something I think we did talk about last time was the short little side story with Damien where he goes on the camping trip and like learns about himself and everything. Yeah. And like, that's sort of, what I think of is the quintessential top spy family wasting time because it's like, here's a side character just going on an emotional journey. So and important. it's so compelling. It's compelling, but he's like, that's also just important of everything because everything you learn about him also gives you information about his family, which is leading to this, his father who is like the linchpin of this entire series that we yeah. still know so little about. Like, I'm so ready for us to meet him at some point in the future, and he's not going to be like what we're thinking. Well, I mean, we already did meet him, but yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Like, the actual. Like, like, like when the happening happens. Yeah. Whether I mean, it'll probably happen before the whatever she gets the six things. Like, well, who knows if that'll ever actually happen. And there's a good point there. In one of the latest chapters, he shows up as a child in Henderson's class and is, like, talking to him, and it's like, Oh, he's he's sort of a psychopath already. <laughs> yeah, like you're just getting these like little views of this thing while you're having this like it's like it's like lore bits via yeah. the social status of people, and it's just so. Well, How? he just keeps saying completely <laughs> contradictory things, and he's the most impossible to read person ever. Yeah, and somehow he's in a seat of power. So, Spy Family anime is one of these ones where when we watched it to begin with it's like oh wow literally we for didn't... moment one it was like you got the you got the right the class, you got the assignment down and we then didn't know we beyond. needed this yep um i think i mentioned this on i think we did a fast take on the first episode but like anya and like the 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 voice acting for anya and everything is just like this is amazing it's so funny Same it's so perfect her. yeah um and it's, it makes me like, as someone who reads so much stuff and then it gets made into an anime and the anime is just terrible. Because you read garbage, Brad. That, you read garbage. It's going to be made into garbage. The fact that you can take these things that are already so good and elevate them to be something even better. Yeah. Money. I, right, money is cash. money is the thing, but Don't it makes me the, do not destroy the cash cow. <laughs> it makes me go like, you know, you could probably spend a little bit more time and money and make these things that aren't really great but are fine and make them good. You know, yeah, but why? There's no money in them. There's no because buzz about that's them. what I want. Too bad, Brad. <laughs> you swill trash on the regular. <laughs> so why I don't watch the anime for most? Who cares of what you think. Uh, I care what I think. <laughs> And I'm the only one. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, Spy Family blew, like, especially like we all, I mean, we were saying it, like when the anime hit, it's like Spy Family is going to blow up. It has yeah. all the pieces to hit all the different quadrants and markets and yada, yada, yada. Like I'm looking at Spy Family art that I got at a convention from multiple years ago, <laughs> like on the eaves of the anime being announced and coming out and going, this is going to explode. Like the fact that I can find merch for this now is kind of insane. But soon, every all the artist alley people are going to have this. People are going to be cosplaying these characters, and they are. They have been. They're beloved. And it's the it's the one anime that's come out that I would show to my sister, who I think <laughs> she would enjoy it. Exploded to the point where it got a non-canon movie 
like immediately. Yeah. Like where that doesn't happen. <laughs> like the, and to be fair, it was a good movie. Like I had I fun. Was, it's, it's disposable to an extent, yeah. but it was fun. Like it did, it's did its job. I got to spend time in the spy family world and that feels meaningful more than right. other anime movies I've watched where it's just like, where are these characters? Why aren't they here? Like, we got to travel somewhere cool. We got to have funny things. I laughed. I felt stuff like, you know. It it took the formula that Spy Family yeah. is using and it made a hour and a half movie out of it. Yeah. And that, it worked perfectly. It's got the old manga thing of just like, I just want to spend time with these people. Yeah. And that's, I we think. be doing whatever. You know, Freerin is obviously one that sort of focuses a lot on the emotional interactions between people and their relationships. Um. And, you know, that's the primary component of the story that all of the the action is, you know, hanging off of. But with Spy Family, the, the action is sort of like the driver of all the plots. But then you find yourself going, I just want to sit with these people and, and see their... It's, it's sort of coming from the opposite direction that Freeran does. And it makes you want to have the thing that Freerin is doing as its main component as you're sort of like, I want to sit here with this and live in this moment with these people. Yeah, and watch their relationships. Like yeah. at some point Lloyd and Yor are gonna properly fall in love, but like being able to see that play out and teased Which out and might be why we keep getting all these side stories now because it's like uh, we've got a lot of chapters here and they're still you know, they trust each other. We're but taking, there's... we're taking like there's constant steps being taken, but not like a progress point. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm not like I need this or I'm going to die. Like it doesn't feel like a thing where it's like these are the goalposts we need to end at. Like that's like a that's a thing that I I want in the back of my head when reading Spy Family. Mm -hmm. But I don't like I don't need it. I'm not like oh my gosh, if they don't get together in the next ten chapters, I'm gonna scream. Like <laughs> it's not that, but it's just like at some point, I need that paid but that I, is not what the entire series is right. resting on I, th I think the there's nothing in any of the arcs that really pushes you to that feeling of oh i need them to get together i don't think they ever do anything that really makes you get impatient with it no, it's just something I want in the back of my head because it's like these two people, like it's the thing, it's that thing of like, I want the big family, like at some point I want that big family team up where all of them freely get to use their powers around each other <laughs> and it's going to be like a really sweet moment. Which sort of happened yeah. in the movie. Yeah. That's, we, canon. that's about as close as we're going to yeah. get <laughs> for a long time. That's why like, I'm keep waiting for it. It's like they get to do that and then like an amnesia thing happens. Yeah. They're like, or they're in some weird elevated state that means it doesn't, they're not, it's not going to stick. Right. But I just get this glimpse of it. You know, I understand, uh, like in the movie, you're not really questioning the fact that Lloyd is like flying, flying plane a plane and, stuff. and the, or then, the fact that how did your get onto the plane? Right. It's like, don't ask when, questions. When Lloyd doesn't go, wait a minute, how is she on this? What is she doing? The, the pod is not calling the kettle black. <laughs> right. He's flown a plane with her before. What? He flew them in a plane to the castle for Anya's birthday party. Right. Yes. Oh, okay. Which, yeah. But then, like, Yor is just there in this crashing airship, and Lloyd's just like, yeah. Okay. I'm a psychologist. <laughs> I'm also here for some reason. Has he said he used to be in the army to her, or no? I don't think he has. I don't think so. Because he wouldn't talk, he doesn't like talking about his past regardless. I mean, so. the whole thing there was like, oh, the army has Anya. I'm going to go pick her up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Movie's non canon. Yeah. That's that's the farthest stretch. I'll the stretch, second farthest. I'll stretch it. I, Spy Family pays me so much in fun bucks. I'll stretch it in any direction it needs to for a while. Yeah. The second farthest stretch is the fact me. that they took Bond on vacation with them. <laughs> no. That's, he's cute. Um, but yeah, um, those were. Oh, I can't God. believe I can't it's believe been, it's been three years, yeah. and it's so amazing to see where those series have gone since then. Of just how much, especially with their anime, both that they got animes that the animes were incredible, and that they've like blown up across yeah. things. It's really neat. I I sorta I sorta want to go. Yeah, we called it. I mean, 
This is the first we get that two a little things bit. we ever talked about. Here, give us three more years. We get to say that without any doubt in our minds when Kagurabachi anime hits and mm. it explodes. Like I'm 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 the fact that we were there literally day one. That one will be one. that one's I think we can actually take credit for that. Because be- I only started reading Spy Family because I heard about it. Yeah. To check so, it out. Yeah, because when I when I started Spy Family, it was it was quite a few I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that far in, but it was quite a few chapters in. I had seen it on it various survived. places. It had gotten a momentum going. I had seen people go, oh, you should read this. Yeah. Um, with Kagurabachi, we got that day one. Day one. So... Day one, baby. Practically simul-released. <laughs> Calling that to the moon and back. The tr- true ownership. So, um, Ben, did you have anything to... Closing remarks on To Spy wrap Family? up on there? That's good. Mm-hmm. It's a good anime. Right. So uh, I would recommend it. Recommend the manga, <laughs> recommend the anime. Still. I would really recommend the most recent arc of the manga. Oh, that has been an emotional roller coaster. I'm behind a chapter and I'm just like dying to read it now. You do. Um, I mean, I hope you don't just go read the latest arc and not read the beginning of it. That would be weird. But um, you do need to understand. uh professor henderson before you go into it if you've watched um, the anime i think you're equipped with everything you need but also yeah just read point. the manga the manga is yeah. really good if you like the anime the manga is great the manga flows like the anime and yeah. you'll just you'll be able to hear the character voices in your head you honestly could just pick up the manga where the anime has ended yep and it's you're, it's, you're still gonna have a great time with it we did we all read it and we yeah. had a great time with the anime still i would say yeah especially for season one i don't think there's anything major that got that got skipped. That's nope. something that both Freer and not Spy con- Family... There's not enough content yeah. for it to be skipped. Um, something that both Freer and, and Spy Family did, which is like, they were very true to the manga. They literally just elevated it. Yep. So They knew what they were doing. And they got um, the budget for it and the time. If you have the time to read the manga and watch the anime... Just around 100 chapters. Do that. Because you It'll won't fly regret by. it. It's real good. All right. Well, uh, I hope uh, Lloyd landed this plane so that we can go to the outro. So thanks for listening to That Time I Got Reincarnated in the Same World as an Anime Podcaster. You can find all of our social media links like Discord, Patreon, and all that other stuff on our website, AnimePodcasterReincarnation.com. You can also find articles on various topics as well as new manga reviews. Um, I, I don't think Ben put one out in, in the last week or two, but there's a couple up there that... Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, I didn't get you. Get ready for a similar thing of a glut of Shonen Jump in the Gun episodes where we begrudgingly have to review three new Exorcist series that I don't want to talk about. Well... Stay tuned for next week because uh, I'm I'm moving up our Dear Anemone episode, which <laughs> Dear, I'd been putting off. Yes, uh, Dear Anemone died before our died. episode that we recorded before it came out. Um, ben might remember because I, I we talked about it a little bit when we recorded it months ago. Um, that uh, not speaking of memes, you guys have been talking about that yeah. is like that is like your go to like worst thing it's it's, it's not the dead, worst thing but it's dead man it's been dead man walking since like chapter yeah, two i was not, not on board with one. that nobody so, liked it um yeah everybody should stay tuned i think it's the like sub 19 yeah 17 chapters wow um, please die i think that's the 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 second worst thing i mean technically it's three well I'll say two because the two ones that we did on those bad heroin addiction ones are like the bottom and okay so dear anemone shonen is like jumping the gun of things in jump yeah worse shonen jumping the gun even worse than shadow that. eliminators yes oh i'll so very shadow much eliminators so. was just generic yeah. but freaking dear anemone like is just awful and made me feel bad and pissed me yeah. off so make sure you're subscribed so you hear that who, next week who knows what i said i don't remember that was me from months ago that's somebody else <laughs> Anyway, we'd love to hear from you on any of those social platforms, or you can leave a comment right on the site. You can even just send an email to isekai-sensei-sama at gmail.com. We're always looking for feedback, and we'd love to chat with you about the topics that we cover. 
jump on our Discord and talk to us about Commodore Perry. Yeah. If you prefer to listen to, the, to our podcast in high-quality stereo, stereo, be sure to check out our YouTube channel where we simul-release all of the episodes. And make sure that you uh, find the version that's, like, green and has, like, the, the, uh, waveform. the waveform in it because the other version is just the, like, Google Podcast feed version because they got rid of Google Podcasts. <laughs> um but I think people can subscribe to that one. I don't know if people can subscribe to the other playlist. Somebody who uses that for podcasts, let me know. Because I'm confused by how all that works. I think it's all just YouTube music now. We also released that version early on Patreon. So if you can't wait, you can join us there and listen as soon as the episode is done being edited. In addition to getting episodes early, all our tiers get to vote on the next series we cover on Heron Addiction... All the tiers also get bonus episodes, and I'll point out our lowest tier is only a dollar. Um, and all of our patrons also get a shout out, which is slightly different depending on the tier. We have all kinds of perks, but we also want to know what kind of Patreon perks you'd like. So let us know. So now it's time to thank our patrons. First off, at our reincarnator tier, we have our friend and uh, two time guest, Moon. Ooh. who is also a moderator on the r slash Otome Isekai subreddit. Also at our reincarnator tier, we've got Cake Dwarf. Um, and as uh, is Here our tradition comes, now... Here it comes, batting down the hatches. I'm going to butcher some German. Warum brocht es ein Dutzend Deutsches um in Glühbirn auszutaschen den Wille Hans Machen Leek Arbeck. At our merchant tier, we've got Kill Hour. And last but not least, at our commoner tier, we've got Rena. Rena. And as always, we want to thank Sigoy Mart for being a great partner for us. Uh, don't forget, you can get 15% off your first order by using the link in the description or by using the code APR15 at checkout. Ben, what do you got going on with words about books? Um... Reading Noir by Christopher Moore, which has nothing to do with anime. I'm sorry. I can't even <laughs> kind of tie it in. So, but yeah, if you like books, check it out. Well, thanks again for listening. And if you find yourself in a strange land, open the country. Stop having it be closed. No, that was really good. Um, good job. Thank you. That was, I was worried that it wasn't going to be very long, but that was like 50 minutes. So. I had seven pages of notes. I wanted to make sure. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I'm glad I, because it's, I am now forever infected with the hardcore history thing, which the Marcus from um, Last Podcast on the Left have is that I have to set up context before I tell the story because if you don't have context, the story has no meaning. Yeah. Imagine a world. The part where I quote, I was like, in my head, I'm reading it in my most, um, fuck, what's his name? Dan Carlin. Yeah, my voice. Dan Carlin. 10,000 soldiers. Okay. The Japanese. They're like everybody else, but more so. <laughs> what crime is going on where you're at? I thought the first one was a motorcycle going by. Me too. I think this is the cop now chasing the person on the motorcycle. <laughs> That would be nice for a change. Anyway, image boards. I think it's just Furukake on here. What? I didn't hear what you said. I was too busy eating. Furukake. Hmm. It's like their little seasoning mixture thing. AB is... Uh, I think it comes from AB Pilaf, a seasoned rice dish with shrimp. Oh, it, that's, why shrimp I, rice crackers. that's why I smelled shrimp. It's uh, a popular Western-style rice dish. <laughs> it uses Western-style rice.
As my wife always, always says, you have such long arms. And she'll, be, she'll be like, oh, I want that. It's so far away. And I'm just like, yoink. Gum gum no reach. Yeah, right. This is the Manga Book Club Revisited. Thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> I'm so glad that no one did that the whole time. I did it in little bits, but I never did like the full on, open the country. Stop having it be closed. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I have that at the end. I can't, we can't do it ahead of time. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was in I was... another world is coming or very. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I killed Ben. Ooh, thank you for muting. That looked rough. Hey, he waited the whole time. That was, that was impressive. He's a professional. It was a struggle there. I release you. <laughs> You're free.